वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट एस कंटिन्यू विथ अवर पोर्सन वी आर इन चैप्टर टू ऑफ अवर सिलेबस नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस एंड स्कोप ऑफ टोटल इनकम असेसिज विल बी डिवाइडेड प्राइमरीली इन टू कैटेगरीज वॉट आर द टू कैटेगरीज ऑफ डिवाइडिंग दी एस एस सी रेसिडेंट एंड नॉन रेसिडेंट एंड बाय नाउ वी नो दैट रेसिडेंसी एज पर टैक्स इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम योर एन आर आईज और योर सिटीजनशिप और नेशनैलिटी इट हेज गॉट नथिंग टू डू इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर number of days spent in india and under that if you are individual or huf you can be further classified into resident and ordinarily resident or resident but not ordinarily resident these are the categories in which we are dividing the assessees and why are we doing this division because as per scope of total income the taxability of incomes in our country will depend on residential status means if you are a resident i have taught you this if you are a resident you will pay tax on which income indian income or global income world income and if you are a non resident will you still pay tax in india on income earned in india that is indian income so indian income taxable for everyone and foreign income taxable only for residents or you can put it like this resident has to pay tax on both incomes but non resident has to pay tax on indian income you can put it both ways and that is going to be the second part because residential status of other assessees like huf company firm also completed and in fact we also finished questions on residential status of all assessees so we now go to the second part of the chapter that is scope of total income something that i have been continuously telling you orally now time has come to write it whatever income has been earned by assessee it will be divided into two types of income income of an assessee will be categorized into two types any income that the assessee has earned in india so we call it the principle of source income earned by the assessee in india based on the principle of source can i call it that it is going to be indian income and any income earned by the assessee outside india foreign income just a second any income earned in india will be called indian income any income earned outside india will be called foreign income yes okay sorry about the interruption income of an assessee will be divided into indian income and foreign income indian income is going to be taxable for which assessee now answer this question resident non resident for whom this is going to be taxable for all all means whether you are r o r whether you are r n o r and whether you are non resident irrespective indian income is going to be taxable for every assessee indian income will be taxable for everyone everyone is that understood this is something that we have been discussing all throughout indian income is going to be taxable for all assessees what about foreign income income earned outside india this is going to be taxable for answer the easy thing will it be taxable for non resident no will it be taxable for resident for sure yes yes which resident ror but this bifurcation this categorization into ordinary and not ordinary exists only for individual and huf in case of other assessees other than individual huf there is only one category called resident and resident has to pay tax on foreign income also so for the other assessees it is very easy for company firm aop boi if you are a resident there is no further classification and foreign income is going to be taxable but in respect of individual huf do you have any further classification that is resident and ordinarily resident and resident but not ordinarily resident correct or no so this will be taxable for ror 
that means please answer will this income be taxable for non resident no will this income be taxable at least with what i have written till now will this income be taxable for r n o r no that means can we say that we are treating r n o r somewhat similar to non resident that means we are not taking tax on foreign income but there is one difference and this is going to answer that doubt so can of yesterday that if you are r n o r you have to pay tax on foreign income because are you a resident even if not ordinary but are you a resident yes you have to pay tax but only and only if the business or profession is controlled from india only if the business and profession is controlled from india other than this r n o r will not pay tax on any foreign income if the business or profession is controlled from india then r n o r will pay tax otherwise r n o r will not pay tax he will be treated as a non resident for other incomes like bank interest in the foreign country dividend in the foreign country he will be treated as non resident only for which income he will be treated as resident if the income is earned from a business or profession controlled from india this is going to majorly answer one big doubt which came in residential status sir what is the difference between ordinary and not ordinary resident ordinary resident has to pay tax under all circumstances on all incomes but not ordinary resident has to pay tax only on indian income foreign income will be taxable only if the business or profession is controlled from india but can i say this breakup is applicable only for individual and hf so first let's keep it simple as far as the other assessees are concerned other assessees means company firm aop by llp what is the bifurcation of assessees how do we classify assessee into resident and non resident in respect of other assessees like company firm etc resident will pay tax and non resident will not pay tax that is the tax treatment of foreign income indian income will be taxable for everyone so this is very easy to understand foreign income will be taxable only for resident non resident will not pay tax that is why we have divided assessee into resident and non resident that is the reason behind our classification and as far as individual hf is concerned indian income will be taxable for everyone foreign income will be taxable for ror foreign income will be taxable for r n o r only if the business or profession is controlled from india wait let me make one more chart this will give you more clarity in the first chart that i have made i have divided income into indian income and foreign income in the second chart this time i am going to divide my assessee into three categories first category is going to be resident and non resident this applies to all assessees and only if you are individual huf then there is further classification into ROR or NOR this happens only for individual HUF this happens for all assessees do you agree with this do you agree with this that means now let's write down which income they will pay tax on if you are a non resident i am giving you options you have mcqs no i am giving you options if you are a non resident this is the easiest of all which income you will pay tax on we have to write the income last time what did we do last time what did we do we divided incomes and we wrote assessees this time what are we doing we are dividing assessee and we will write the income so i am asking you the easy question first non resident will pay tax on indian income foreign income none of them or both of them indian income very easy 
non resident will pay tax on indian income very easy resident will pay tax on which income indian income or foreign income or none of them or both of them four options can i say both of them both of them means indian as well as foreign income so are you clear about the discussion of assessees other than individual hua for the time being if you ignore this part ignore this part company firm aop boi llp artificial juridical person what is their only division resident and non resident resident will pay tax on world income non resident will pay tax on indian income and that is the meaning of scope of total income are you understanding this but when the assessee is individual huf there is going to be further division of assessee into what ordinary and not ordinary what is the rule for ror again this is very easy this part was very easy this part is very easy for ror we have already decided which income will be taxable will indian income always be taxable for ror yes indian income is taxable for non resident also so why is it difficult is it going to be taxable yes what about r and or indian income is taxable for non resident also so what about r and or yes foreign income again answer the easy thing for r or for r n o r this is what i taught you in the chart here r n o r will pay tax only if the business or very good the business or profession is controlled from india yes okay na yesterday you wanted to ask me sir why are we classifying you understood resident and non resident resident world income non resident indian income resident world income non resident indian income why are we classifying further into ror and r nor because r nor will pay tax on foreign income only if it is controlled from india only if it is controlled from india that means supposingly you are a resident but not ordinarily resident who are you see this is very easy and this is very easy non resident is very easy only which income is taxable indian income ror is very easy only which income is taxable all incomes confusion arises when we are discussing r and or indian income will be taxable foreign income will be taxable only if earned in india and only if sorry business or profession controlled from india foreign income will be taxable only if the business or profession is going to be controlled from india see now you will understand that there were two assessees whom we made resident purposely now i would like to revise with you what we discussed under residential status yesterday first way of becoming resident 182 days second way of becoming resident was 60 in the current year 365 in the last four years but there were two people for whom 63 365 was not applicable citizen of india who is going outside for earning in that today we will check whether you remember the cdc whether you have revised or no we have a question on that crew member cdc period excluded and second citizen of india or person of indian origin coming for a visit 6365 was not applicable but if your income exceeds 15 lakh rupees which income which income indian income wait one second wait Indian income. Now you realize, irrespective of residential status, anyways you have to pay tax on that. And your foreign income. But we will not take all your foreign income. We will take only which foreign income? Only if the business or profession is controlled from India. If that total exceeds of fifteen lakh rupees, that means it's a big amount, according to Modi ji. And we want tax on that, and thus we will make you a resident. but 
you will never become ordinary resident you will always remain not ordinary resident because we want to target only this income and not ordinary resident will pay tax on this income let me take you a little more into residential status revision if at all you have gone through what we did yesterday there was a third case of becoming resident which we did somewhere near the end of individual residential status if you are a citizen of india and you are not a tax resident of any other country and your income exceeds 15 lakh rupees which income again indian income and foreign income if the business or profession is controlled from india then what will we consider you as a resident but always you will be considered as not ordinary because our target is to tax you on that foreign income where the business is controlled from india i took examples of two students liana and devika okay supposingly they are earning indian income of 2 lakh each 2 lakh rupees each what is the indian income and say for example they have invested in some property here they are getting rent some bank interest they are earning here some indian income uh, income arising from indian sources tell me one thing whether they are resident non resident ordinary not ordinary is this 2 lakh going to be taxable for everyone yes now they have got dubai bank interest dubai bank interest means listen is it indian income or foreign income foreign income correct this is foreign income and it is not controlled from india that means this only if you are ror it will become taxable if you are rnor or non resident it will not be taxable for non resident only indian income is taxable and for rnor foreign income is taxable only if the business or profession is controlled from india that means can i say this 3 lakh will not be taxable for both liana and devika but apart from this they also have one income which is income from a business or profession controlled from india income from matlab they are doing they are having a job in dubai it is a branch office of an indian firm of an indian company that means can i say the head office is in india so the business is being controlled from india and from that business say so liana is earning 10 lakh salary devika is earning 14 lakh salary okay and both of them are citizens of india but not a tax resident of dubai you cannot become a tax resident over there because there is no income tax in uae let's now understand what is the difference in tax treatment here first let's talk about this assessee liana answer this is only an example answer the questions that i am asking what is her indian income 2 lakh what is her foreign income 13 lakhs wait please what is her foreign income 13 lakh out of this 13 lakh how much is earned from business controlled from india 10 lakh for the 15 lakh criteria will we take all of them or will we not take 3 lakh which which are the ones which we will take for deciding 15 lakh criteria only 2 lakh and 10 lakh correct or no so is she fulfilling the 15 lakh criteria no she is not fulfilling the 15 lakh criteria that means liana will be treated as a non resident and tell me now out of her total income of 15 lakh which income she will pay tax will she pay tax on 2 lakh yes 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 why she will pay tax on 2 lakh because indian income everyone has to pay tax even non residents have to pay tax correct and what about her dubai income 3 lakh she is a non resident very easy to answer will she pay tax not taxable and what about 10 lakh the business is controlled from india still not taxable because business controlled from india that foreign income is taxable only for those assessees who are r n o r non resident has to pay tax only and only on indian income wait let me complete the example of devika also then the entire picture will become clear and you will today understand so can i are you in class yes, today you will understand what is the reason behind bifurcation into ordinary and not ordinary everybody is with me let's talk about devika she has got indian income like rent interest etc how much 
टू लैक वन थिंग आर वी ऑल श्योर इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ हर रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस वॉट एवर इज द फाइनल आंसर दिस टू लैक हैजू बी टैक्सेबल इन इंडिया येस एज फार एज थ्री लैक इज कंसर्न दैट इज इनकम अर्न फ्रॉम दुबई सोर्सेस that will be taxable only if you are a resident if you are a non resident then foreign income will not be taxable that is scope of total income now 14 lakh rupees is foreign income because she is working in a foreign company correct but the business profession is being controlled from india for the 15 lakh criteria are we going to include this 14 lakh rupees yes sir yes yes what are the two incomes that we include in that 15 lakh criteria indian income and foreign income if controlled from india that means are we going to include these two incomes for that decision making and we will not include this this income for the purpose of 15 lakh criteria we will not be including this income correct so what's that amount is that more than 15 lakh rupees in case of devika yes 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 so devika will become what resident or non resident resident wait wait why are we making her resident because she is not a resident in any other country she will be considered as resident of india but once we make you resident that means we start taxing you on world income but on this income we don't want tax because this has got nothing to do with india no connection with india this income has connection with india this income has got connection with india so we want to take tax only on these two incomes and which is why the assessees who are made resident because of that criteria which criteria 15 lakh criteria there are two such assessees no who become resident because of 15 lakh criteria one the 123 65 days assessee and second that that assessee who is not a resident anywhere else in case of both those assessees we have clearly laid down a rule that they will never become ordinary they will always become what not ordinary this assessee is becoming resident only because of 15 lakh criteria whoever becomes resident because of 15 lakh criteria will always become not ordinarily resident once you have decided that devika is not ordinarily resident this is easy to answer what is the rule for 2 lakh rupees 2 lakh rupees you can easily decide even non resident has to pay tax so what about our nor devika taxable or exempt taxable 3 lakh rupees foreign income not taxable not taxable listen if she had become ordinary resident no then this would have been taxable understood and this is why we make her not ordinary resident because we don't want to tax your foreign sources income we want to tax only those incomes that have connection with india and now tell me about this 14 lakh you can look at this chart also and tell me about 14 lakh this 14 lakh rupees is for an income is for an income is for an income if she was a non resident not taxable if a person was ror look at how easy ror is you know what if any of these assessees was ror there is no need to discuss so much all incomes are taxable for ror yes or no yes but what is the difference in ror and rnor this foreign income will not be taxable but what's your answer about 14 lakh rupees can you tell me the answer for 14 lakh rupees taxable or not taxable 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 because the business or profession is controlled from india so there are some assessees now you will get the clear picture please pay attention you will clearly understand the logic there are some assessees who are not a resident of any country purposely they are staying in countries which don't have income tax a country like uae does not have income tax if it does not have income tax you will never become resident over there if then there is no income tax only how you will become resident are you understanding but you still have indian connection so we want to tax the income which is earned out of indian connection only if the total is more than rupees 15 lakh if the total is more than 15 lakh it's a big amount and thus we will take tax from you so in this case it was less than 15 lakh we made you non resident take tax only on indian income but in this case it was more than 15 lakh we will take tax on indian income and foreign income 
if the business or profession is controlled from India. Wait. Let me do the full revision, then I take your doubt. So, very easy to answer this question. Non-resident will pay tax on which income? Indian income. Easiest of all. That means, an assessee who is non-resident will pay tax only on this income. Very easy. ROR will pay tax on which income? Again easy. Everything. ROR will pay tax on everything. Correct or no? But our NOR will pay tax on Indian income and foreign income only if the business or profession is controlled from India. Now everyone is clear? Yes, please. You can ask your doubt now. Then, 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 then that condition will not apply. Supposingly, she was not in Dubai, she was in New Zealand. Then, the condition of making you a resident in India because you are not a resident anywhere else, that rule will not apply. But is it possible that you have stayed 182 days in India? Listen, huh? we don't know the income tax law of New Zealand. Kali, listen to what I am saying. Everybody listen, you will understand, okay? We don't know income tax law of New Zealand. Supposingly, you have stayed 182 days in India and 100 days in New Zealand. In India, you are resident. And in New Zealand, you become resident only after 80 days. So, over there also you are resident. So, that condition will not apply what you are saying. Which condition? Not a resident anywhere else. Because you have already become resident in New Zealand also. But are you also a resident in India? Yes. Once you are a resident because of 182 days, then we go and check the additional conditions. 730 days in last 7 years. Resident in 2 out of last 10 years. Those were the conditions to make you ordinarily resident. If you are ROR, then any income, New Zealand income, Indian income, everything will be taxable. But if you become R, NOR, still, this income is still going to be taxable. If you are R, NOR, this income will be still taxable. But in case of Liana, she became non-resident only. So that is why this income did not get taxed. Understood? So you have to first decide whether SSE is resident or non-resident or R, NOR. And on the basis of that, go and identify. What are his incomes at different locations and which of these will be taxable, which of these will be exempt. The whole summary basically lies in this chart that I have made for you over here. First classify the SSE based on the rules studied in the last lecture and then on the basis of that classification decide. So if I ask you now questions, will everybody, one last time, will everybody be able to answer the questions? Indian income will be taxable for whom? ROR, RNOR or non-resident? All of them. Foreign income, foreign income which has got no connection with India will be taxable for whom? ROR, RNOR, non-resident? ROR. Foreign income which is earned from a business or uh, profession set up or controlled from India will be taxable for whom? ROR, RNOR, non-resident? ROR, yes and RNOR also. Okay? And, and, and. I will change my question. Non-resident will pay tax on which income? Indian income or foreign income? Indian income. ROR will pay tax on which income? Both incomes. RNOR will pay tax on? Answer one by one. In yes or no? Indian income? Yes. Yes. Foreign income without any Indian connection? No. Foreign income from a business or profession controlled from India? Yes. Is that understood by everyone? Absolutely, totally understood by everyone. Alright. With this, we come to a very important discussion. We have given, all throughout, if you carefully pay attention, we have given importance to the concept of Indian income. If you want, please tell me in one line, what is the tax treatment of income earned in India based on assessi or it does not depend on assessi? Irrespective of who is the assessi, what is the tax treatment of Indian income? Taxable. Taxable, no? Whether you are ROR, RNOR or non-resident, Indian income will always be taxable. So, it is very important for us to decide what is Indian income. We should know what is Indian income. To give you some examples. Supposingly, I am working with multiple coaching organizations in India. 
can i say i am working in india and i am receiving my payment also in india it is very easy for you to decide whether this income is indian income or foreign income yes second example very easy easy examples i am doing with you so you will be you know you don't need to write second example let's take the example of a person called barack obama he has retired from the post of president who is the president of america right now biden hmm. obama is retired i think after obama there was one more president president trump he has also retired do you know that donald trump was a very very rich one of the richest businessman of america before he became president of america in fact after becoming president his income reduced because as president he was not allowed to do certain businesses because he was holding the position of president of america okay so supposingly now he is not president anymore and thus he is back to his business so where is he doing business america where is he receiving money from his business america even a 3 year old kid will answer this is indian income or foreign income foreign then in this entire story do you realize the process of earning income is of two steps income can be earned in two steps this does not require a taxation knowledge this is not rocket science this is common sense for earning income you have to first work without working you don't earn income and then you get your payment the process of earning income is of two steps something as simple as you are having a job in any company so full month you work and at the end of the month you get your salary we also in accounting language call it income that has accrued accrued means i have already worked for it so the income has accrued yes and this is called if boss is paying that means employee is receiving if both happen in india my example i work in india and i get paid in india very easy is it indian income yes, yes. if both happen outside india example of donald trump very easy it is foreign income but what if one of them happens in india and the other happens outside india i'll give you examples don't worry don't worry liana is working in a dubai company so where are you working in dubai where is the income getting accrued outside india then one day you came to india with your family for a tour and your boss said that salary payment take in india only take your salary in india because you are here no for a temporary period so you worked in dubai but you got payment in india is it possible that you work in one country and get payment in another country is is the other way round possible supposingly i work in india i finish my batch and go away i am in america i am in need of money i call one of the students whose payment is outstanding and i tell the student that i need money i am in america he says my relative is staying in america he will give you the payment so i worked in india but i got paid in america is it possible that i have done one of the two things in india and the other outside india in that case how will you decide whether it is indian income or foreign income that is a question today and why is deciding indian income foreign income necessary ladies and gentlemen this entire chart this entire discussion taxability of an income in india whether it is taxable or not taxable in india will strictly depend on whether it is indian income or foreign income if it is indian income then everyone has to pay tax if it is foreign income that only ror has to pay tax and foreign income control from india then rnor has to pay tax so we have to decide whether it is indian income or foreign income how will we decide look at how smart how clever how buddhiman our government is look at this what is our government saying please pay attention any income will be considered as indian income 
वंस वी कंसिडर इंडियन इनकम दैट मीन कैन आई से वी विल टेक टैक्स फ्रॉम एवरी वन इफ द इनकम इज रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया देन इट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज इंडियन इनकम लेट मी मेंशन दिस इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ प्लेस ऑफ अक्रूवल इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ प्लेस ऑफ अक्रूवल इग्नोरिंग द फैक्ट वेर दिस इनकम बिकेम ड्यू इग्नोरिंग द प्लेस वेर द इनकम बिकेम ड्यू इफ इट इज रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया इट विल बी इंडियन इनकम दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लियाना प्लीज पे अटेंशन वेर इज शी वर्किंग एवरी वन वेर इज शी वर्किंग Dubai. Dubai. So where is her income getting accrued? In Dubai. Dubai. She came to India with her family, and the boss gave her salary in India. Is the income received in India? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Indian income. Now whether she becomes R O R, whether she becomes R N O R, or she becomes non-resident, doesn't matter. This income is going to be taxable in India. irrespective of her residential status it will be taxable because any income received in india will be treated as indian income very smart no our government is so liana today i am giving you tax advice without any extra payment i generally don't give tax consultancy see learning taxation for classroom purposes is different for uh, tax of exam is different from tax practice yes we do agree that it is the same income tax act 1961 but this year the classroom will teach you what is the law and how to escape this that is called planning liana if your boss is may give making payment of salary in india you insist you tell your boss under all circumstances i will not take my payment in india please give my payment in uae only do you understand do you understand okay yes sir second second any income that has accrued in india ladies and gentlemen irrespective of place of receipt it will be treated as indian income what is the impact you tell me the impact first then i will do the explanation what is the impact once an income is treated as indian income what is the impact in taxation pay tax who who will pay tax uh, everyone will pay tax everyone will pay tax yes or no how see how smart how clever how intelligent our income tax law is tell me what are the two steps of earning income how does anyone earn income what are and by the way how to earn income that income tax will not teach you huh? income tax will only take tax on the income that you have earned income tax will not teach you how to earn income earning income is your talent if you have talent you will earn income if you have brains if you work hard you will earn income what are the two ways of earning income or two steps of earning income first you work for it that means your income will accrue and second you get your money that means you will get payment you receive your money to take an example of a salaried employee you work for your office full month that means can i say your salary is becoming due salary is getting accrued salary is getting accrued yes and then at the end of the month you will get payment that means can i say you have received your salary yes. yes in any one of the two events happening in india accrual happening in india receipt is irrelevant receipt happening is in, in india accrual irrelevant if any one of them happen in india then the income will be treated as indian income and that means everyone has to pay tax irrespective of residential status if you have understood answer the following questions i am working in india i am teaching in india and i am getting my money also in india easiest of all indian income or foreign income indian income 
then irrespective of my residential status can i say i will have to pay tax yes. very yes. good second second i am working in india i worked in india and then i went abroad i received my money over there so income accrued in india but i got my payment outside india in america i got my payment is it indian income indian. yes because any one of the two things happens in india it will be treated as indian income again can i say i have to pay tax irrespective of my residential status everybody has to pay tax on income that has accrued in india third example of liana she has worked in uae so where has the income accrued uae then she received her salary in india is that indian income yes if you receive in india irrespective of place of accrual that means can i say she will also have to pay tax yes and now the example of donald trump where is he working america and where is he getting paid america that means can i say receipt and accrual both are happening where america receipt and accrual both are happening in america so that will be treated as which income indian income or foreign income foreign income and that will be taxable only if the assessee is resident and if you are r nor then in that case only if the business or profession is controlled from india in one line i am giving you a conclusion receipt or accrual any one of the two things happens in india then your income will be considered as indian income in one line have you understood this conclusion receipt or accrual any one thing also happening in india it will be treated as indian income everybody clear that means once you earn your income in india or you get your payment in india it will be treated as indian income and you will have to pay tax on that irrespective of your residential status how will it impact taxation look at the larger picture here look at the larger picture okay supposingly you are a foreign cricketer foreign sportsman who has come to india to play cricket where are you playing cricket in india so where is your income getting accrued in india some of these people get paid also here but supposingly you leave the country because of some emergency you leave the country and you receive your payment over there will it still be treated as indian income yes why because accrued in india then place of receipt is not relevant take another example suddenly because of covid ipl had to shift to dubai uae mein ipl got conducted no whole world will stop schools will stop colleges will stop educational institution will stop but cricket cannot stop because of the money involved if you want to know how much money is involved if you want to know how many crores go up and down in every ball being bowled in that match of 20 overs you do one thing take amazon prime subscription take prime subscription watch a web series called inside edge you watch the web series inside edge anyone you have multiple language options yes sir it has three seasons season 1 season 2 season 3 you know what is a web series by the way that everyone must be knowing you know or you don't know that also no you don't know what is that series no go watch inside it you'll come to know what ipl is all about so they took ipl to dubai now tell me where is the match being played uae that means where is the income getting accrued uae but these players they finish the tournament they come to india and they receive their payment in india that means it will be indian income again taxable for everyone any connection with india it will be treated as indian income and you will have to pay tax understood how smartly our government has decided that means the only way to escape taxes earn also outside and get payment also outside means work also outside payment also outside if both and that also you have to be non resident if you are resident then again it doesn't matter understood how they have made sure that in all ways they will be able to collect tax from india or from people how they will be able to collect are you following okay 
सर इफ आई एम वर्किंग इन अमेरिका आई रिसीव पेमेंट इन इंडिया इफ आई एम वर्किंग इन अमेरिका दैट मीन्स अक्रूवल इन अमेरिका एंड पेमेंट इज इन इंडिया दैट मीन्स इट इज इंडियन इनकम और फॉरन इनकम इंडियन इनकम एंड हुई टैक्स ऑन दिस एवरी वन इफ अमेरिका इज एक्ट कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक दिस दैट इज इफ अक्रूड इन अमेरिका आई नीड टू पे टैक्स एंड इन इंडिया आई हैव टू पे टैक्स बिकॉज आई हैव रिसीव पेमेंट इन इंडिया वेरी गुड देन डू आई नीड टू पे टैक्स इन बोथ कंट्रीज एब्सोल्यूटली yes that is where the concept of double taxation arises absolutely yes that is where the concept of double taxation arises ladies and gentlemen let's assume you understood the doubt i work in america and i receive payment in india because i receive payment in india will it be treated as indian income yes and i have worked in america america also has same rule that any one happens in india it will be Amer any one happens in america it will be american income so will this income also be taxable in america yes that means can i say same person on the same income will be paying tax in both countries yes and for this we have the concept of double taxation relief what is the name of the concept it is unfair no it is unfair no taking taking tax twice from the same person in two different countries on the same income it is unfair it will cause hardship to the assessee you work so hard to earn money and two governments want tax on that so it will create problem do you agree with this so we have something called double taxation relief which is the first chapter of direct tax in ca final first chapter of direct tax in ca final and if you have the anxiety of knowing more about it in ca final also i have one clear open offer for students watch my first five chapters free of cost i have uploaded them on youtube first five chapters you can watch if it is on youtube that means everyone can watch no you can like share subscribe hit the bell button at the end of five chapters if you think that conceptually logically nothing is bigger than logic if you will be able to manage this subject more than and better than anybody else in the country then you enroll for my class otherwise you don't enroll i don't want any payment from you open offer for ca final students okay and then obviously once the student has studied inter for me i also from me i also know that the student is not going to study a final from anybody else that much confidence i have on myself also okay so are we clear about what will be and junaid i think you are also clear about what you asked me yes there will be double taxation but you will get relief and for that we have a chapter in ca final so are we all clear about what is the indian what is the meaning or definition of indian income yes sir everyone but apart from that we also have a concept called income which is <coughs> and with this concept the scope of total income part will get over we have to solve questions and our chapter number 2 will get over income which is deemed to accrue or arise in india first tell me this when an income accrues or arises in india when the accrual is in india what do you call that income indian income or foreign income indian income that means can i say if we are saying that the income is going to accrue or arise in india that means this income will be treated as indian income and thus who will pay tax on this everyone but here i need to explain to you not taxation but english the meaning of the word deemed the meaning of the word deemed what do you mean by the word deemed in english language what is the meaning relevance importance of this word deemed has anyone heard this word before today where where sorry deemed partner ah deemed partner in in partnership act or llp act in law 
ओके आई थिंक स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम साउथ हैव प्रोबेबली नॉट हर्ड एनीबडी फ्रॉम साउथ इन वॉज इट देयर इन योर सिलेबस इन साउथ ओके डोंट वरी डोंट वरी आई विल एक्सप्लेन द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर सेइंग दैट दे हैव हर्ड दिस बिफोर वेर एवर इन लॉ और एनी ऑफ योर इलेवेंथ ट्वेल्थ पोर्सन इन मुंबई यूनिवर्सिटी एग्जाम्स if you have heard and you know about it then would you like to explain would you like to participate does not mean that i am giving my explanation burden to you just that i want to know how much you know and then i will see whether it is right or wrong can you be a little loud tamanna please no no not right but thank you for participation yes so can sorry the word used by moin is everyone even listening he used a word assumed presume or i will give you a more appropriate word here you can use the word consider you can use assume word also if you are comfortable with that you can use the word assume also but the most appropriate word here is the word considered deemed word is new for a lot of students but have you heard the words assume presume considered before today now you do one thing read the line not with the word deemed but with the other word that i have written then what is the line income which is assumed to accrue or arise in india income which is considered to accrue or arise in india that means the activity related to this income it is possible that you have performed outside india where have you performed the activity for earning the income for example liana devika their employment is where outside india so where is their income getting accrued outside india outside india yes or no only if payment is received in india we consider it as indian income everybody is clear till here no the first two points that i have written but sometimes what will happen your income has accrued outside india your income has accrued 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 where outside india but we will assume we will presume we will consider this income to be indian income because of some reason this is surprising this is shocking sir where is the income being earned but you are assuming sir that the income is in india sir how i'll do one thing shall i tell you the points one by one what are the cases this is section 9 income deemed to accrue or arise in india is given where in section 9 but i have been continuously telling you section numbers will be relevant only if i tell you hello correct so can i just tell you the points one by one what is written in section 9 as and when i will do the points you will realize oh yes it makes a lot of sense we have one of the head of incomes there are five heads of income five heads of income our upcoming portion salary house property business profession capital gains and other sources five categories in which your taxable income will get divided one of the heads and one of the so called difficult chapters people outside this classroom find capital gains a very difficult chapter whether capital gains is easy or difficult time will tell right now i can only say it depends on who you learn it from it depends on who is teaching you anything can become easy or difficult it depends on that in short if i have to tell you what is capital gains profit on sale of asset that much accounts you have studied profit on sale of asset if i buy an asset for 10 lakh and sell it for 15 lakh rupees what is my profit that is capital gains for you so very easy to understand the meaning of capital gains capital gains will be deemed to accrue or arise in india if the asset is located in india 
irrespective of the place where you do your transaction irrespective of the place where payment happens irrespective of the place where contract happens let me explain with the help of an example let me explain with the help of an example x x is in america can someone in america own any asset in india for example he has got a property in mumbai is it possible that an american has invested in property in mumbai very much possible yes, yes? foreign national foreign citizen indian citizen who is currently staying abroad has got asset in india very good but he has decided that he will never come back to india once people go outside anyways they don't prefer they never want to come back to india okay the life outside india is very smooth less corruption better facilities you get your own worth people are generally happy once they go outside india he has decided he will never come to india and thus he wants to sell this property now please pay attention if he comes to mumbai and sells the property to me that means can i say i will make payment to him in mumbai and this point will become applicable to him then will it be indian income and taxable for him in india already in point a all this discussion only of deem to accrue or arise not required hmm if he comes to mumbai and we do an agreement in mumbai and i buy the property from him in mumbai and i give him payment in mumbai that means has he received money for sale of property in mumbai yes, that means it will become indian income and all this is not required also whatever we are learning yes, yes. but what if he is selling the property to another person why in america we are living in the era of digitalization so what they do is mr x and mr y they meet each other mr x on his phone is showing photos of the house mr y likes the house please listen please listen to the entire story if you don't understand any line in the story tell me to repeat i will do that he has shown the full house in photos he has shown the location of house on google maps mr y liked the property they did an agreement and mr y will make payment to mr x for purchase of house the agreement the payment everything 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 happened in america agreement happened in america payment happened in america that means can i say one non resident is making payment to another non resident outside india agreement is being done outside india everything has happened outside india come here tell me is this point a applicable is this point a applicable no why because the money is received outside india is this point b applicable income accrued in india accrual means place of agreement you can say no because the agreement was done outside india but can you see this where is the asset in india then whether you do your agreement payment everything outside india also this income will be deemed to considered to accrue or arise in india and we will call it indian income to put it in short to put it in very short ladies and gentlemen please pay attention to put it in very short where has mr x earned the gain on sale of asset he has done the transaction in america but for income tax purposes this income will be deemed to accrue considered to assumed to accrue or arise in india and once an income is accruing and arising in india what is it called indian income or foreign income just tell me the answer to this question if you understand this if you answer this correctly i will go to the second point
will mr x pay tax on this capital gains in india wait mr x is a non resident will he pay tax you are saying yes he will pay tax non resident but how will how will mr x will pay tax how will the government good question एक मिनट वन सेकेंड गुड क्वेश्चन कैन यू आंसर माई क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट देन आई विल आंसर योर क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन इज वॉट आई हैव टॉट यू एज पर दैट इज इज लेट मी आस्क यू लाइक दिस इज मिस्टर एक्स लाइबल टू पे टैक्स इन इंडिया एज पर द रूल यस हाउ गवर्नमेंट विल कलेक्ट आई विल आंसर एवरीथिंग इज मिस्टर एक्स लाइबल टू पे टैक्स यस वाई ही इज अ नॉन रेसिडेंट स्टिल यू आर सेंग ये वाई because it is indian income why is it indian income because it is deemed to accrue or arise in india and thus it is indian income and thus mr x will be paying tax in india so understand the chronology chronology first asset is located in india once asset is located in india then we will not check the place of agreement the place of payment anything this income will be deemed to accrue or arise in india if the income is deemed to accrue or arise in india that means it is indian income and if it is indian income that means everyone has to pay tax irrespective of your residential status mr x will be liable to pay tax in india is this clear now the question is how the question is ladies and gentlemen how correct hai listen whenever whenever you are making payment to non residents which are taxable in india is this a payment being made to a non resident and is this payment taxable in india with whatever we discussed i am answering your question sir how government will get that tax i am answering that question not relevant in the chapter that i am doing but i am still answering that question okay it is the duty of this person who is making payment why is making payment to x don't give full money don't give full money supposingly you are giving him 5 crore rupees calculate what is the tax of mr x from this 5 crore you have to reduce the tax that is called a tds tax deducted at source this is the second last chapter of your portion and in fact in intermediate it is applicable only to a little extent in detail tds is one of the biggest chapters of ca final direct tax if i have to tell you the meaning of tds in short right now short the person who is making payment can i say the payer will deduct tax of the payee from the payment can i say the payee is the assessee liable to pay tax because the payee is earning income think about it x is selling his property to y that means who is earning profit x or y x and who is the payer of this income to x why so it is the duty of the payer that from the payment that you are making you subtract you deduct the tax that is called tax deducted at the source of payment tds tax deducted at source and if you don't deduct then we will take from your pocket we will take tax in fact there is interest also there is penalty also and you can go in jail also if you don't perform the duty that means the duty of collection of tax has been handed over to the payer the payer the duty of payment of tax has been handed over to the payer is that understood and failure to do this duty will make you liable for tax interest penalty everything and now again you will have a doubt mohin and everybody else listen again you will have a doubt sir but he is also outside india so how we will take money from him listen ladies and gentlemen why is outside india but is the property in india the government can send its tax recovery officer at any time and take away the property have i told you about tro he will come and take away your properties if you are not paying so our government in our income tax law itself nowhere else in the big massive income tax law there are plenty of provisions with which the government will be able to recover your taxes supposingly why does not have any asset in india in case in case this property also he has gifted to someone else then our government can 
take cooperation from American government, send a request letter to American government that sir, this person is a tax defaulter in India. He has not paid taxes properly. Please help us to recover those taxes. Government of America will take away his assets in America. Government of America will take away his assets in America. Are you following? And help government of India to recover those taxes. So, your question was, sir, how will government get those taxes? There are plenty of ways already mentioned in the big income tax law to recover taxes. We have a full department to do those recoveries. But my question was, is X liable to tax on this capital gain in India? And today, only that much is relevant under scope of total income. Is X liable to pay tax on this capital gain in India? Yes. Why? He has done agreement, payment, everything outside India. Then why is he liable? Because asset is located in India, it will be assumed to be Indian income. And if it is Indian income, that means everyone has to pay tax, whether you are resident or non-resident. Is the concept clear? Understood everyone? Yes, sir. Very good. Like this, we will be doing some more points. This is point B of which list? income deemed to accrue or arise in India, which will be treated as Indian income. And once it is treated as Indian income, we will take tax from whom? You cannot forget this huh? if we are going into the detail of something. Else. Once it is Indian income, it will be taxable for whom? Which assessee means? My question is which assessee? ROR, RNOR or? Huh? It will be taxable for? Everyone, are you following? Yeah. Anybody with video off for more than five minutes will be removed from class. Huh? I am keeping a track of what everyone is doing. Okay, once in a while, five minutes. If you have some emergency, I also have some emergency. I have the cupboard keys in my pocket. Somebody is coming and asking. I am removing and giving, but every time I am not putting my video. You are having emergency, I am allowing, no problem. But emergencies cannot come every few minutes, huh? maximum five minutes. That way, if one of the students keeps the video off also, honestly speaking, it does not make any difference to me till the time other people are interacting and I am interested only in those students who are taking interest in class. Okay. But if I allow one person, then I have to allow everyone else also. Okay. So, this rule will not be changed. Let's continue. We are in the list of incomes that will be deemed to accrue or arise in India, it will be treated as Indian income and once it is treated as Indian income, that means it is going to be taxable for, for whom you made this mistake. So give me the correct answer. Taxable for whom? Taxable for everyone. Next. Ah, yes. Sir, the capital gains, uh, is Mr. X or Mr. Y having the word in this case? Mr. X. The responsibility of tax payment is? Mr. X. Because who is the SSE earning income? Mr. X. And who pays tax? Can I say the person who earns income is also going to be the person who is liable to pay tax? Yes. Yes. But under the TDS rules, we have also given him responsibility that when you release your payment, you don't release full payment. From that payment, you subtract the amount of tax liability and pay it to the government directly. That is called tax deducted by the source. Is Y source of income for X? Yes. And thus we call it tax deducted at source. So we are giving you the additional responsibility of paying tax to the government on behalf of X. Not from your pocket. You can deduct from his. See, you are going to make payment. We took an example, no? 5 crore rupees. So you deduct from that payment. You are not supposed to pay from your own pocket deduct from the payment that you are making and this additional responsibility is given to the payer. Why? If you don't do this responsibility, you will also be liable for interest and penalty. Okay, sir. Okay. Chalo. Let's go ahead. Second income. Income in the form of interest. Actually, why is this point called income deemed to accrue or arise important? Listen, please. If I am working for a company, that means can I do, can, can I say I am, I am doing physical work every day by going in office? So it is easy to decide the place of accrual. If I am working in Mumbai, that means it is Indian income. If I am working in America, that means it is American income. But do you know that incomes which are earned from investments, interest income, 
dividend income for them you don't have to work you just have to invest think about it think about it i have given a loan to you if i will give a loan can i say i will be the lender and you will be the borrower do you agree with this Ali Baba, ha, I know you focus on what I am listening. No, what I am you listen to what I am speaking. No, I give a loan to you. Am I a lender and you are the borrower? Yes. That means you will pay me interest. My question is, do I need to work every day to earn that interest? Is interest is an income? Is interest an income for which you have to work every day? No, it is an investment. It will accrue on a daily basis. principal into rate into time yes or no so where will this income be considered as accruing or arising do you understand for salary you can say wherever i have worked that is my place of accrual for business you can say wherever my business is situated that is my place of accrual but for interest income it is not possible to decide and that is why they have kept interest in the concept of deemed to accrue or arise in india let's see what do they say if interest is received from government it can be central government it can be state government interest is received from whom government then that interest is going to be deemed to accrue or arise in india example x in america has invested in government bonds of india who has issued the bond? you all know what are bonds debentures no the government has raised finance by issue of bonds you all know the meaning yes government bonds in india that means can i say from these government bonds he will be getting interest yes who is paying the interest to him government government that means the income is deemed to accrue or arise in india that means any payment that you receive from a government and they have only used the word government that means tell me if they only use one word government so it will be central government state government or both it can be both so if any interest is paid by government that means it will be assumed to be accruing or arising in india think about it you invest in bonds i if i am explaining the logic i can just tell you the section and finish it very fast i am explaining the logic to you you invest in bonds that means can i say you give your money to the government for using government will use the money where will government of india use your money in india or outside india in india that means your interest is accruing and arising where in india that means it will be treated as indian income or foreign income indian income and that means this income will be taxable for whom ror or nor non resident everyone everyone are you following in other cases if the money is used in india in other cases if the money is used in india then it will be assumed as income deemed to accrue or arise in india i'll give you an example for this i'll give you an example for everything x is in america he has given a loan to again y in america that means can i say why will pay him interest yes or no yes, this loan money why has used for business in india the loan money has been used by why for doing business in india then this interest income will be deemed to accrue or arise in india because the money is being used 
for doing business in India. To give you an example, supposingly an American company is doing business in India, is it possible? For doing that business, do you need money? So this American company has taken loan from someone in America. Can I say the payer, pay, they are all non-residents? Their agreement of loan must have done, must have been done in America. The payment of interest, this payment is also happening in America because X has never come to India. X has only given loan. But where is the loan money being used? In India, then that interest income, this interest income will deemed will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. It will be treated as Indian income. And Mr. X, even if you are a non-resident, you have to pay tax because Indian income, everyone has to pay tax. We started the chapter today, today's lecture with this only Indian income, everyone has to pay tax. So if the loan money is being used in India, then everyone will have to pay tax on that. Are you understanding? Sorry. Who is liable to pay tax? Who is the SSE? Tell me that first. Mr. Y. Mr. Y. Who is earning income? Liable X. X. Huh, who is the SSE earning income? X. Who is supposed to pay tax to the government? X. X. But because of TDS provision, Y will deduct from the payment of X and give it to the government. So you please again and again don't go into the TDS aspect as of now you will and you should only focus on this much part only focus on this much part that this income is taxable in India. Your current focus should be only this much. Is this income taxable in India? That should be your only point of focus currently and presently. Is this clearly understood? Who will pay? Let me say this only X is to pay. Then again you will ask sir how will government go to X? No government will not go to X. Government will apply TDS provision on him. But that is all about how to do recovery of taxes. Currently we are not going to the recovery part. Currently we only want to understand is this income taxable in India or not taxable in India. Is this income taxable in India? Yes. yes. Sir. Are, no, no. He is getting payment in America. The agreement of loan was also done in America. Still you are saying it is taxable in India? Why? Because it is Indian income. Sir, why is it Indian income? Because it is deemed to accrue or arise in India. So any income which is deemed to accrue or arise in India will be Indian income. And if it is Indian income, then everyone has to pay tax. Right now, scope of total income is only about deciding is it Indian income or foreign income. If it is Indian income, it will be taxable. That's the only thing that we have to decide. And I'll tell you one more thing. This also we don't have to decide for residents or ROR, we don't have to decide whether Indian income and foreign income. It does not make any difference whether it is Indian income or foreign income. Tell me why. Because both incomes are taxable. If you are resident, then everything is taxable. So the whole discussion about Indian income, Indian income, Indian income, this discussion about Indian income, I hope you understand we are doing this discussion only for non-residents. Difficult to understand, but I repeat what I am saying. We are discussing the concept of Indian income only for non-residents. For residents, we are not interested in whether it is Indian income or foreign income because both of them are going to be taxable. Are you following? So answer my question. Is this income taxable in India? That much is enough for the time being. Okay. Next. Income in the form of salary see salary is one such income where you have to work then only you are and salary was the example that i took i took the example of liana or myself or devika or donald trump all of us can i say for salary the normal rule is always going to be what if your place of work is in india then your salary will be treated as accruing in India? Yes or no? Yes. Very easy. Correct. 
and what about a person whose job is outside india working outside india then then it will be treated as foreign salary accruing outside india just one point you should note if this salary is once again paid by government same rule as interest if government is paying you interest can i say without checking anything it is going to be treated as indian income same thing if government is paying you salary it is going to be treated as income that is deemed to accrue that is arise in india if government is paying that means the income will be deemed to accrue or arise in india who am i be talking about ladies and gentlemen please listen who are we talking about is it possible that government of india employees are sent to work outside india and if you say no sir not possible then let me tell you it is very much possible very much possible every country in the world will have indian embassy you know that supposingly you are an indian my my wife with some of her cousins had gone to a picnic to malaysia and one of her cousins lost her purse in in malaysia or singapore one of the malaysia lankavi she lost her purse and her passport was inside the purse and you i hope you understand that without your passport you cannot return to india okay so they immediately went to the indian embassy of malaysia they said that we have misplaced our passport it is an emergency we have to go back to india she was given an emergency passport by the indian embassy in malaysia just like we have us consulate we have us consulate in mumbai in bkc this is very close to the head office of institute office icai is also icai office is very close to the us consulate here so if you want america visa you have to apply over there in the consulate that means can i say there will be such an indian embassy and indian consulate everywhere in the world and the employees who are working in that embassy are employees which are sent by government of india they are central government employees now tell me please where are these employees working singapore Emb indian embassy in singapore or indian embassy in malaysia or indian embassy in new zealand where is the employee working outside india outside but who is paying the salary indian government this income will be deemed to accrue or arise in india listen ladies and gentlemen there are some government employees who are working in india itself any student of this classroom who has a family member who is central government or state government employee any student whose family member is a government employee yes anu which department you are mute today only kerala government so obviously such government employees are physically working in india only no then this normal rule will apply we are talking about government employees who have been sent abroad to working so where is their place of working outside india but if the salary is paid by government it will be deemed to accrue or arise in india it will be treated as indian income and that income is going to be taxable in india is that understood even if you are working outside india it will be treated as indian income it will think about it if i am working in indian embassy in singapore i am working where indian embassy in singapore full year i was in singapore because that is my job no that means stay in india is zero that means i am a non resident but still the salary which i receive is indian income and i have to pay tax on that salary in india understood because indian income is taxable for everyone so any payment made by government same rule was applicable for interest same rule is applicable for salary same rule is applicable for some other incomes that i am going to discuss if the payment is being made by government it will be treated as indian income if payment is made by government it is indian income and once it is indian income everyone has to pay tax everyone means ror rnor non resident everyone has to 
pay tax once it is Indian income. Anyways, our target is currently only non-residents because resident anyways has to pay tax on even if it was foreign income, resident has to still pay tax now. So, right now our target is only non-residents. Next income. Income in the nature of royalty or fees for technical services. Very famous concept in CA final. FTS. Income in the nature of royalty or fees for technical services. FTS. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Like in interest, we discussed that borrower will pay interest to the lender. So, if borrower is government, it is Indian income. Or otherwise, if the borrower has used the money in India, it is Indian income. Similarly, in salary, we discuss if the place of working is India, that's the normal rule. It is Indian income. But if government is paying you salary, then even if it is outside India, it will be treated as Indian income if you are a government employee. Now, let's talk about these incomes. Before learning the tax treatment, it is necessary that you know the meaning. You know the meaning of royalty and FTS. You have any idea of what is royalty, what is FTS? Huh? The royalty is paid on production. Production? Not really. Not really. First, I will give you some examples of royalty. Please listen. Please listen. Huh? I can tell you the taxation rule very easily. It's a one line that I have to write here. Only one line I will write here, it will get over. The tax part is very easy. But I want to prepare you in such a way that you can answer any question. So, even if you don't know the meaning of royalty, but you only know the tax treatment, you will still get marks in exam. You will become a CA, but I don't want you to be a CA. Wait, I want you to be a good CA. And there is a big difference. So, please let me first tell you what is royalty. Supposingly, I am using your property, your land, your building, your machinery, your furniture, your motor car, is it possible that you use asset belonging to other people? Whenever we use asset belonging to other people, we have to pay some compensation to the owner of asset. And the compensation is called rent. This is one word which everyone has heard. When we use asset belonging to other people, what do we pay? Come on. Rent. Whenever we use asset belonging to other people, we pay rent. Correct? But if the asset is an intangible asset, intellectual property, examples, patent, trademark, drawing, design, copyright, brand, if we use someone's intangible asset, a logo or anything like that, then we pay something called royalty. To give you examples, I told you I am an author of books. I write multiple books every year for CA students. Along with the teaching part, I am also an author. But I know only how to write the book. I cannot get involved in the day-to-day -day printing, sale to ensure that, see, we get online orders. So, the orders come directly through our website. We get the notification that Mr. So-and-so, you have to fill the form, name, postal address for the courier of the book, contact number, everything, that this person has placed an order. We verify with the bank statement whether the payment is received or no. Once we check the payment is received, next day morning we do the we start the dispatches and in two days the book reaches the student. I don't have time to do all this. You think I can sit and do dispatch for two hours every day? Is that possible for me? No. All that is done by the company. Copper Gate. Oh, I obviously I joined it as an employee many years ago. Now I also hold the status of director over that. That is how you ca I work with an organization. I stay with the organization always unless the organization is causing trouble to me. Because we in CA courts observe stud uh, people, students, they take a job. In five months, they leave the job. In eight months, ten months, one year, they, they are never happy with their job. But those students who survive in that job, if you survive for two, three years also, there is most likely that that company or that firm will offer you partnership. It will make you director. I have worked, we are working together since 2013. 
and these days whatever i decide even the managing director listens to me does not listen to any it works that way you have to work that way and i don't have time to do day to day dispatch and sales and all so the entire work is handled by the company every time the book is sold a portion is paid a part of the money is paid to the author okay in my case i am very very clear about this that i don't take home a single rupee extra for books books are not for making money i have talent to teach i charge fees for teaching books i don't earn profit at all so if i have cost of printing there is printing cost there is some cover page binding charges that i have to give to my printer then i have to put that book in one envelope i have to get that address of the student and send the courier there are some expenses of printing binding envelope courier is that exact price that is taken from students we do not take a single extra rupee so we are doing it at no profit no loss the book part but in case of and there are some big big publication houses in ca i am not talking about other cases also i am not talking about an author like chetan bhagat or any of these other authors who write novels i am only right now talking about ca books there is a publication called taxman publication there is a publication called snow white publication if we talk about some books which are used for graduation exams in mumbai again there are some publications like white house public there are multiple publication houses what does this publication house do it takes the book of the author it prints the book sells it at a very high price and a portion of that book is paid to the author for writing that book a portion of the sales that is called royalty on copyright my book is my copyright so every time you sell a portion will be given to me same happens in the case of lecture lectures are recorded once in a year but sold throughout the year and that is in case of taxation that we have to do recording every year in case of subjects like costing fm they never change one recording is useful for 3 4 years also sometimes in subjects like costing and fm because there is no amendment in tax there are amendments so that recording is done once the recording is done it is handed over to the company whatever are the charges of encryption and all that that is incurred and a portion of that recording is paid to me as the faculty that is again royalty on the copyright of my lectures supposingly i am a scientist i have done an invention a formula for cleaning clothes it will take away all the stains but the color of the cloth will not change this was surf excel ad dark jai par rang na jai the stain will go away but the color of the cloth will not fade i have invented that formula only a scientist will have knowledge about those chemistry formulas with the help of that formula the company hindustan unilever or procter and gamble or any of these companies they are making detergent packet and selling every time they sell a packet they have to pay me some charges that is called royalty on patent patent means an invention patent means an invention supposingly you are a very famous brand brand like mcdonalds or dominos or anything they have presence everywhere they are omnipresent they have presence in every city every town every country i want to start a restaurant near my house i cannot call that restaurant mcdonalds fast food or dominos fast food i cannot call it if i use that brand that's a famous brand for using their name brand value i have to pay them that is called royalty so whenever we are using someone's patent trademark drawing design brand in one word all this is called intangible asset you have tangible assets land building plant machinery and you have intangible you all know what are intangible did you know what is intangible asset before today's lecture then ladies and gentlemen the story is very simple if you use tangible assets of other people if you use what tangible assets of other people then it will be called rent and if you use intangible asset what is royalty ladies and gentlemen boys and girls what is royalty royalty is basically compensation for usage of intangible assets compensation for usage of intangible assets can i say the user of the asset will make payment to the owner of the asset supposingly author is the owner of copyright so publication house is using that copyright no faculty is the owner of the lectures so company is using those lectures no mcdonalds is the owner of the brand 
So I, the restaurant owner, am using that brand. The user, see if you understand this line, the user of intangible asset will pay royalty to the owner of intangible asset. Just like user of tangible asset pays rent to the owner of tangible asset. So you can call them lesser and lessee also. These are accounting terms. If you know them, it is okay. Otherwise, relax. User and owner, you understand? User and owner. User will pay owner. Intangible asset, the payment is called rent. But in intangible asset, the payment will be called royalty. Understood? And similar services with human involvement is called fees for technical services. Here, focus please. The payment is used for, the payment is made for using your asset. Listen, company is using the copyright of the author. Company is using the lectures of the faculty. The restaurant is using the brand of McDonald's. That means, we are using your asset. So, we call it royalty. But, sometimes it is possible that we call you, that please come, we need you. Whenever a human being has got technical knowledge of a particular field, whenever you have got technical knowledge, what do you have? Technic knowledge of something which everyone does not have. You have some knowledge which everyone does not have. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me give you an example. Example. Have you heard of something called annual maintenance contracts? AMCs for computers, for machineries. You have, you have heard something called AMC, then I will go further. If not, then I will explain what is AMC. You have heard of something called annual maintenance contract? Example, example, I will do one AMC with you. I purchase a laptop, okay? It's a computer, laptop computer. It's a machine. It can break down. I will require repairs. There can be software related issue. It is possible that your computer is, uh, you know, getting stuck again and again. It hangs again and again. So, I will do a contract with you. One year contract, 2000 rupees I am giving you. Example I am taking, one year contract, 2000 rupees. During this one year, if at any point of time there is any software related issue, you have to come and repair it. You will take charges only if there are extra spare parts required. For services, you will not take any charge. One year, charges I have already paid you in advance, 2000 rupees flat annual. We do that for our AC, do we or do we not? AC maintenance, you all have never heard of AC maintenance contract? Pay charges. And every three months, that company guy will come, open your AC, clean that AC. That is an annual maintenance contract. They will do it free. Unless there is a part that requires replacement. They are not doing it free. You have paid them in advance the annual maintenance amount. Correct or no? Same thing happens in ACs, refrigerators, any kind of electronic equipment. Do you understand the person who is doing that computer repair work, or that AC repair work or that refrigerator repair work has got knowledge of this field and you are using his services. So, the payment you are making will be called fees for technical services. So, if you use asset, it will become royalty. But if you use human services, then it will become fees for technical services. Is that clear? Meaning of royalty and FTS? Today, our objective honestly is not understanding the meaning of royalty FTS. Today, the reason why we are in class is to understand the tax treatment of royalty and FTS. If now I want you to participate, if the royalty or FTS is paid by government, Even if it is paid outside India, even if it is paid to a non-resident, even if agreement is happening outside India, payment is happening outside India, what do you think? With all the points that we have already studied, please come on, participate and tell me, what do you think? This income will be deemed to accrue in India. That means it will be treated as 
Indian income and it is going to be taxable for everyone. And in other cases, if the asset in case of royalty, we are using the asset. And in case of FTS, we are using the services have been. Can I say this is same rule as interest? If the loan money is used in India, interest will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. Likewise, if the intangible asset is used in India, then royalty will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. Likewise, if the services, the technical services are used in India, then FTS will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. Example, de example, example. You are an American author. You are an American author. Okay. And I am printing and selling your books in India. That means, can I say I am using your copyright in India? Then even if you are a non-resident, even if we do agreement outside India, payment outside India, where is your asset being used? In India. That means it will be income deemed to accrue or arise in India. It will be treated as Indian income and you will have to pay tax. Understood? Everyone? And if the payment is made by government, then we will not check the place also. It will always be treated as Indian income. So, somewhere... The treatment of interest royalty FTS is same if you carefully observe. If paid by government, what is the rule for all the incomes? Interest royalty FTS, if paid by government, what is the rule? Deemed to accrue or arise in India. And in other cases, if the loan money is used in India or the asset is used in India or the services are used in India, then it will be deemed to accrue or arise in India, treated as Indian income. Understood? J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling is, uh, I think, the author who wrote Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Uh, if her books are getting sold in India, that means, can I say the copyright is being used in India? Answer this. Answer this. Yes. That means the income is deemed to accrue or arise in India. That means it is Indian income. That means she has to pay tax. Even if she is a non-resident. Ha! Huh, but listen. Most cases what happens, you know. The JK Rowling actual book, official channels, people don't buy, people buy pirated versions of the book. Yeah. From roadside stalls. Then she is actually not receiving only that money. Okay? In, in things like books, in things like lectures, movies also. Piracy business is bigger than the actual business. So then in that case, she won't be liable because somebody is using her assets illegally here. Okay. And in case she is selling her book through official channels here, then the income is Indian income and she has to pay tax. Now again, you will ask me, sir, how will that tax be recovered? Because JK Rowling will not come to India. I have already answered this question on a couple of occasions today. How? The person who is making payment to her, that company will make payment of royalty. No, we have the concept of deducting TDS on the royalty. Okay, so the payer will be deducting that TDS. TDS is one of the chapters that we will be covering. Small extent in inter and big, big extent in final. So can I say you all have understood the rule for interest, royalty, FTS? Everyone, when they will be deemed to accrue or arise in India? Clear? Next. Matlab? If the funds are being used in India, it is going to be treated as Indian income. Okay. Next. Income in the form of dividend. Now, when does a person earn dividend income? When you invest in shares. If the dividend is earned from Indian company, it will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. If the dividend is earned from Indian company, it will be deemed to accrue or arise in India.
सर वॉट डू यू मीन बाय दिस मीन्स I had explained to you. Remember the meaning of domestic company, where a foreign company distributes dividend to its Indian shareholders out of income taxable in India. In India, now listen. If the payment is happening in India, you don't need to come to this point. Ah, huh? if the payment happens in India, that means already it has become Indian income here itself. So foreign company we are not discussing right now. We are discussing which income? Indian company's dividend income. Is it possible that this Indian company has got foreign shareholders? Hey, there are multiple foreign investors who have invested in Indian company shares. Last month, in the month of December, these foreign investors sold shares worth more than one lakh, two lakh crores, which is why the markets crashed drastically. Last one month, December was very bad for the stock markets. So, is it possible that foreigners have invested in Indian shares? So, will they be eligible for getting dividend? Will they be eligible for dividend? Yes, is it possible that the Indian company is making arrangement of dividend in that country? That you are my American shareholder, I will pay you dividend in American bank account. You are my Australian shareholder, I will give you dividend in the Australian bank account. Just like foreign companies make arrangement in India, can Indian company also make arrangement outside India? It will still be treated as Indian income, irrespective of place of payment. Irrespective of place of anything, if dividend is being paid from, if dividend is being paid from India, it will be Indian company. It will be always treated as Indian dividend income. In other words, if any Indian company is paying dividend, let me see if you are able to answer this. If an Indian company is paying dividend, which shareholder will pay tax? R O R, R N O R, or non-resident? Everyone. Everyone. If a foreign company is paying dividend, can I say only ROR will pay tax? But if the foreign company is arranging for distribution of dividend in India, then it will become domestic company, and the place of payment becomes India. Once the place of payment becomes India, then the first point will be applicable. Understood? So foreign company dividend can come only because of this point. But what about Indian company dividend? Indian company dividend will always be treated as Indian income. Is that understood, ladies and gentlemen? This was point E, no? Next, this change took place a couple of years ago. Whenever there is any kind of gift given, gift given by whom? By a resident to a non-resident. First of all, just a small piece of knowledge. I am going to teach you this in detail later on. Gift received is taxable under a head of income called income from other sources. Many years ago in India, there was a separate act, gift tax. Gift tax got abolished because they brought gift under taxation in income tax only. So, if you receive any gift, gift is also an income which is taxable. In which head of income we are going to classify our gift? Income from other sources. Five heads. Five heads. Salary, house property, business profession, capital gains. Fifth head is income from other sources. Gift is going to be taxable under IFS. Firstly, okay. Now listen. If one person gives another person gift in India, can I say it is Indian income for sure? It will be taxable. But is it possible that the gift was given outside India? I, a resident, go to America or go to UAE, go to Australia, and give someone gift over there. If gift is paid by a resident to a non-resident, it is going to be deemed to accrue in India. If gift is paid by a resident to a non-resident, it is going to be deemed to accrue in India. Even if the gift was given outside India, if the giver is a resident, we will assume that it was income taxable in India. It is always going to be assumed that it is income taxable in India. Is this understood? And in case of other incomes, it is very easy to decide. In case of, for example, salary, did we write the normal rule? Did we write the normal rule? Huh? 
gift under income from other sources is taxable whether it is cash or kind cash is also taxable kind is also taxable under kind there are only selected assets immovable property sculpture artwork drawing archaeological collection painting jewelry shares and securities bullion only these assets are taxable that also if the value of the gift is more than rupees 50000 if the gift worth is less than 50000 it is still going to be exempt under income from other sources in that case also there are some exceptions prescribed if you get gift from relative it is not taxable if you get gift at the time of your marriage that one occasion in life where even income tax has got sympathy with you income tax also feels sorry for you so any gift received at the time of marriage is not taxable any gift you receive because of somebody dies somebody dies and you get that money by way of death will inheritance inheritance you understand that is also not taxable any money you receive from a charitable trust or a medical trust for you know education scholarship your medical scholarship that is also not taxable subject to all the conditions which are given in section 56 which i spoke right now the conditions of income from other sources we will decide whether gift is taxable or not taxable but but if all those conditions are fulfilled and the gift is being given by a resident to a non-resident if all the conditions are fulfilled the gift is being given by a resident to a non-resident it will be treated as indian income because this is income deemed to accrue or arise in india so right now the question is when will gift be deemed to accrue or arise in india if the gift is given by a resident to a non-resident it is deemed to accrue or arise in india but taxability will again be based on all the conditions which are written in income from other sources chapter when is gift deemed to accrue or arise in india when the resident is giving gift to non-resident the gift will be deemed to accrue or arise in india and this ladies and gentlemen is for you the definition of indian income this is indian income for you what is indian income first if the income is received in india can i say we will not check the place of accrual at all it is indian income second if the income has accrued in india can i say we will not check the place of receipt at all it is indian income third there are some incomes which we will assume that they have accrued in india what are the points that we have studied the incomes that are assumed to be accruing in india first sale of asset if asset is located in india we will not check anything else it is indian income interest income paid by government is indian income and if by anybody else if the loan is used in india it is indian income same rule for royalty and fts if paid by government it is indian income and paid by anybody else if the asset or the services are used in india correct salary normally salary becomes due where where you are working but if government is paying then again it will be deemed to be indian income if you get dividend from an indian company it will be deemed to be indian income and finally if you get gift from a resident it will be deemed to be indian income assumed to be indian income what is the importance of india uh, income becoming indian income i'll speak one line see if you agree with this indian income has got no importance if the rcc is resident do you agree with this line if the rcc is resident then whether the income is becoming indian income or foreign income does not make any difference why because you have to pay tax on both so indian income's importance is only for which rcc ror nine are nor and non-resident because they have to pay tax on indian income this is where scope of total income ka revision will come so quickly tell me indian income who will pay tax everyone will pay tax foreign income who will pay tax ror will pay are nor only if controlled from india but non-resident will not pay tax or reverse way of learning scope of total income ror will pay tax on which income all incomes our nor will pay tax on which income indian income but foreign income only is controlled from india and non-resident will pay tax on only on indian income and this is why deciding indian income for non-resident and our nor is important so what is indian income one quick revision of indian income received in india don't check anything else 
accrued in India don't check anything else and some incomes are assumed to be deemed to be considered to be accruing and arising in India and we have just now finished the list of those incomes also and this ladies and gentlemen is our concept of scope of total income this also is our second chapter this is the completion of our second chapter residential status and scope of total income but obviously as you are aware that officially we can declare it as complete only after we finish all the questions first chapter was introduction there was no question in second chapter we studied residential status we did all the questions of residential status now we have studied scope of total income so we will have to go and do the questions on scope of total income i think in questions 1 to 11 we have solved or 1 to 10 we have solved in that 9 is remaining i know that but 10 is done 11 also is done so we have to do question number 9 and then we have to finish from question 12 onwards and today whatever you have studied since 9 30 last two hours whatever you have studied that is going to be tested when we do the questions okay some questions may be solved questions please don't read the answers our classroom discussion is more important those questions which are not solved your your responsibility is to participate in class and give answers because that will give you confidence about whether you have understood whatever i have taught or not copying part can be done no we can have screenshots we can do whatever copying part is not difficult okay so we will go to the questions i will directly first take you to question number 9 which is on page number 14 question number 9 which is on page number 14 okay yes who is willing to read the question please okay please question number 9 page number 14 that means wait and pay attention what the question is let me explain the question i am not giving any answer to you right now what is the question can i say they have given us here a list of incomes can you see a list of incomes given to you you can see interest interest profit income 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 pension can you see all this and they are asking you to decide whether this income is taxable or not taxable. Income taxable or not taxable on the basis of if the assessee is, who is the first assessee? ROR? Second assessee? RNOR? Third assessee? Non-resident. It is possible that some incomes will be taxable only for resident, not taxable for non-resident. It is possible that some incomes will be taxable for everyone. And all the answers that you give will depend on the scope of total income part that you have been taught today. Are you following? For example, if it is Indian income, then it will be taxable for all three. If it is foreign income, then it will be taxable only for ROR. RNOR only if controlled from India. So whatever is discussed in scope of total income, you have to decide. And for solving this sum, if you observe the same incomes, only to write them so the particulars column is directly copied can i say this is the question from the particulars column i have already copied so we don't have to write the name of the income again i have also made for you the three amounts column because the particulars is same can we solve the sum in a columnar manner ror column our nor column and non-resident column if it is taxable we will write the amount if it is not taxable we will write zero same thing we will do for this column, this column, this column, income by income and at the end can I say we will get the total of all three. Okay. If you have the printout of the book, if you have the printout of the book, then in that case, you do in the, if you have already taken printout at home or office, then you do it from the printout. Otherwise, participate with me in class and at the end of the class, like I give you screenshots of the uh, full uh, chapter that I have written while teaching my explanation. I will also give you screenshots of this sum that we are solving. But your responsibility in class is to strictly focus on the discussion and see if you are able to give correct answers. We will go very peacefully, very slowly. We are in no, absolutely no rush. If there is shortage of time to complete portion, we can keep extra lectures or extend our lecture, but we will never rush 
our portion never rush our portion okay so let's see what do we have can i say we will go income by income and decide what is the treatment for ror or nor and non resident in that i'll tell you one thing if you are doing the ror column you don't even need to use your brain you know what in ror column you can actually write the incomes directly because for ror what is going to be taxable everything is going to be taxable correct but still still be alert there may be some new concept that you will come across so peacefully one by one you will moin you will read the income with the amount and then i will do the discussion and then together we will decide what amounts we have to write in the three columns no problem yes, yes please read the first income you have not read the full thing moin you have missed something very important ladies and gentlemen this one line has got massive impact do you understand how how if the loan is utilized in india that means this income is deemed to accrue or arise in india if the income is deemed to accrue or arise in india that means this income will be called indian income or foreign income indian income and if it is indian income then it will be taxable in which out of the three columns all the three columns that means can i say in all the three columns i will be writing 1 lakh and why why am i writing 1 lakh for all the three columns because this income is or you can write in the solution also because this income is once it is indian income can i say it is going to be taxable for all the three assessees do you understand the importance of the scope of total income classification of income into indian and foreign meaning of indian income income received in india income accruing in india and income deemed to accrue or arise in india do you understand the importance of that discussion and that is how we are able to decide the taxability of incomes in our country yes sir and do you understand that if you don't read the question properly if you just miss one line how dangerous it can be in deciding the taxability of any income very good let's go ahead see if you don't make a mistake now second income what have i taught you utilized i never mentioned business or anything moin you are again and again confusing the class okay i know you are working in office i know you have studied some tax no no i don't want you to confuse other people you spoke about presumptive taxation you spoke about tds i have just i have just copied your and copied your dependent post for business and you have you wait back after the class i will have discussion with you separately when other people have left so what is going to be today's time table after we finish the lecture okay i will take doubts and screenshots after doubts and screenshots everybody will leave you will stay back okay stay with me i will have all the discussion with you but not in the presence of other students because this will create confusion in the minds of other students as of now everybody in class is clear about that 1 lakh being taxable in all the three columns because it is indian income income deemed to accrue or arise in india very good second income One fourth received in India. That means, can I say I can divide this income into thirty thousand and ten thousand? How thirty and ten? Ten thousand is received in India, and obviously the other thirty must have been received in Italy. Let's do one thing. Let's discuss taxability of them individually. Let's talk about the ten thousand first. One fourth received in India. That's very easy to decide. One fourth is received in India. what is it indian income or foreign income indian. once an income is received in india it will always be treated as indian income and indian income will be taxable for all that means are we clear that 10000 will be taxable for all the three assessees because it is received in india it is indian income what about 30000 rupees what do you think it is income in italy that means can i say foreign income no connection with india so can i say that 30000 will be 000 for all three columns no 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 i'll tell you one thing in this column when you look at the income at that time only you stop using your brain 
entire 40,000 is going to be taxable. Why full? Because ROR has to pay tax on Indian income of 10,000 as well as foreign income of 30. Just tell me one thing. In 40,000, do you understand Indian income is, uh, foreign income is 30,000 and Indian income is 10,000? Foreign 30, Indian 10 and ROR has to pay tax on both. But our NOR and non-resident have to pay tax on which income? Non-resident, tell me please. Indian income or foreign income? Only Indian income of 10,000. And our NOR, again only Indian income. Which is the only foreign income of our NOR which is taxable in India? And there is no such thing given business control from India. That means can I say our NOR will also have only 10,000 rupees. That is the Indian income. So all you are required to do is now understand the task. Look at the income. Decide from this income what is Indian income, what is foreign income. For ROR, don't decide. ROR, you directly make him pay tax on it. For the other two assesses, decide. And which part you will make them pay tax? Only on the Indian income. And for our NOR, foreign income if controlled from India. Understood? Let's see if the process becomes a little fast as you go further. Third income, please. Profits of a business in Kolkata managed from outside India. 40% of the profit is received outside India. If 40% of the profit is received outside India, that means can I say 60% of the profit must have been received in India if I am not wrong? Yes, sir. That means this time if I have to classify this income, can I say it will be 30,000 and 20,000? 20, 30,000 is received in India and 20,000 is received outside India. You agree with this? Ha! Huh? Don't be shocked or surprised. Have I written anything in the answer? No, I am only having discussion with you. Tell me, Ashfia, what is going on in your mind? This entire income will be considered as Indian income because an income which is accruing in India. Where are you doing business? Kolkata, Kolkata is in India, ladies and gentlemen. Mamta Aunty is ensuring that Kolkata will become a part of Bangladesh very soon. But as of today, it is a part of the geographical territory of India. Correct? If the business is in India, that means place of accrual is in India. And once place of accrual is in India, do you understand where you receive the money is irrelevant? Yes, received in India, then accrual is irrelevant. Accrual in India, then received is irrelevant. And then there are some incomes which are deemed to accrue or arise in India. Once the business is in Kolkata, this income, ladies and gentlemen, is Indian income. And once the income is Indian income, which of the three columns will pay tax? Everyone. All three Everyone. and that also on the full amount full 50,000 because once again it is Indian income once again it is Indian income everyone will pay tax is this understood I was trying to confuse you purposely by saying received in India outside India I wanted to check whether you are alert in class that is important no? learning things is important and avoiding mistake is also important okay let's see if you show me your talent on a continuous basis not on a temporary basis. Next income. Income from Ha, ah, please. Income from agriculture About this remittance, I will give you explanation. I will give you explanation. Okay. First focus on this part. Income from agriculture in Sri Lanka, and you have received also there only. That means you have done agriculture business in Sri Lanka. And where have you received also your money? Sri Lanka. So tell me, where is accrual of income? Outside India. Where is receipt of income? Outside India. And does this fall in any of the cases of deemed to accrue or arise in India? No. That means the conclusion is, my question, answer my question, don't ask cross question. Answer my question. Is it Indian income or foreign income? For now, I know what your cross question can be, sir. You have taught us. I have not taught you that agriculture is exempt. When I teach you the next chapter today in the second half of the class, I am going to start third chapter, exempt income. Third chapter is which chapter? Exempt income. Okay. In exempt income chapter, 
I will teach you section 10, which says agriculture income is exempt. I'll I'll clarify right now only before starting chapter 3. Agriculture income is exempt only if earned in India. Agriculture income is exempt only if earned in India. What is exemption from agriculture income? Agriculture income in India is exempt. Agriculture income in India is in India, in India, in India, in India, in India is exempt. That means agriculture income outside India is taxable. So that confusion should not arise only. Don't ask counter question. Answer what I am asking. Is this Indian income or foreign income? foreign income once this is foreign income that means can i write 000 in all the three columns no at least ordinary resident everybody knows that it is going to be taxable full three lakhs whether remitted to india not remitted to india doesn't matter ror has to pay tax on world income yes sir as far as not ordinary resident is concerned can i say he will pay tax only if the business was controlled from india is the business being controlled from india no, it is fully in Sri Lanka and obviously non-resident also will not pay tax because it is, we already discussed, foreign income. I ask you, accrual outside, received outside, foreign income and if it is foreign income, then only ROR will pay tax. Is this clear? Now the question is, is this clear what I have written? Answer is done. A little discussion on amount remitted to India. Okay. Later on, you may be thinking that sir, non-resident column, at least 50,000 is remitted to India. So, you should write it. What do you mean by remitting income from one place to another? What do you mean by remittance? Okay. Supposingly, I go to Kerala for a batch. See, a final batches I come physically. Next trip is 9 to 23rd March. Anybody interested in, in, in looking at my handsome face physically can come and attend the final lectures also. Okay. So, 8 March, I will be mostly coming to Kochi. I am working over there. I am earning over there. If I ask you the city of my income accrual and the city of my receipt, can I say I have earned income in Kerala in Kochi city? Now I bring that money to Mumbai. Obviously, they don't pay me in cash. It's a check payment. So anyways, it comes in my bank account only. But assuming it is paid in cash, that means with that money, I will come to Mumbai. That is called remitting money from one place to other. You earn money. Then after earning, you can take your money with you wherever you want. You agree with this or no? I earn money and I transfer it in my ICICI bank account. If I have another account in HDFC, can I transfer my money from ICICI account to HDFC account? Can I transfer my money to from my coat pocket to my trouser pocket? Trouser account debit to coat account being money paid. Is it so? When I earn income, I earn income. We have to decide whether it is taxable or not taxable. After earning income, if I take my money from one place to other, that is called repatriation, remittance of money from one place to other. Have I earned income again for the second time? Awesome. Taking money from one place to other is not income only. This is 50,000. This is not income. This income was already earned 3 lakh rupees in Sri Lanka. After earning, you take money from one place to other. That does not mean you have earned any income. There is no question of income tax. There is no question of Indian income or foreign income. It is not income only. Where is the question of Indian income or foreign income? It does not fall in the definition of income only. You have just taken your money from one place to the other. Do you understand? And thus, thus, bringing money, sending money, taking money from one place to other, all that is absolutely irrelevant. Irrelevant when it comes to deciding taxability. This is not my income only. My income was 3 lakh and I have already decided what is the tax treatment of 3 lakh. Everyone clear? Yes, sir. Everyone, you want to write a note on this? No? Okay. Take it. Next. Point number 5. So, what is the total income that you have earned in the business from Nepal? 4 lakh. Four lakh. But now, this time, can I classify this into 375 and 75? No, 325 and 75, sorry. 75 is received in India. That means, can I say 325 is received in Nepal? Let's discuss for both incomes, one by one. 75,000, I will ask you the easy question first. 75,000 is received in India. Once an income is received in India, can I say the place of accrual doesn't matter, irrelevant? Yes, sir. What is 75,000, Indian income or foreign income? 
Indian income. And if the income is Indian income, in which column it will be taxable? All the. All the. That means, can I say, in all the three, 75 will come definitely? Yes. Now, let's talk about 325. Answer what I am asking, 325. Where is the business? Nepal. Nepal. That means, can I say, accrued outside India, place of business is outside India? And if 75 is received in India, that means 325 was received in Nepal. That is why they have not mentioned about it. That means received also outside India. Means accrual also outside India, received also outside India. Accrual also outside India, received also outside India. But the business is controlled from India. Very good. My first question is not about the control. My first question is, is this clear that 325 accrued and received both outside India? My question is whether this 325 is Indian income or foreign income. Received outside India, accrued outside India. Indian income or foreign income? Hmm? Okay, let's do one thing. Let's write for 325 and 75 separately. Okay. Can I say 75,000 will come in all the three columns? Okay. So that discussion is over. Now we are discussing only about 325,000. No problem. Let me show you how easy it can. You are getting confused unnecessarily. It is easy. It is. 75 is easy. Everybody understood. No doubt about 75. Let's talk about 325. You know what? When I am in this column, I don't need to talk to you about 325. You don't need to talk to me about 325. What will it be? I am giving you only two options. 0 or 325. That means effectively can I say here the entire 4 lakh will become taxable? Okay, let me write it separately. 325 will also come. Yes or no? Because ROR has to pay tax on world income. You got confused because you are thinking about all three columns together. Out of 4 lakh, 75,000 tax treatment is over. In 325, the first column is over. Now, we have to just fill up these two things. We have to decide whether 325 is taxable or not taxable. For this, I am discussing with you. Indian income or foreign income. When does an income become Indian income? If the receipt is in India, it is Indian income. Is 325 received in India? No. No? Kya yes, sir? Kya yes, sir? That means you have not understood the question only. My question, I will repeat. Is 325 received in India? The question is saying that 75,000 is received in India. That means the other 325 must have been received where? In Nepal. in Nepal. So I will again ask my question. That means you did not understand the question. That is why you went wrong. Is 325 received in India? No. Is 325 accrued in India? Business is in Nepal, how can it accrue in India? In Kolkata case, we said business is in Kolkata, matlab it is accrued in India. That means your business is in Nepal. That means business is accruing, income is accruing in Nepal. That means, can I say, 3,25,000 received in Nepal, accrued in Nepal? Received in Nepal, accrued in Nepal? And does business income fall in any of the points that we studied in deem to accrue or arise? We studied capital gains, dividend, interest, royalty, FTS, salary. Did we discuss business? Business means place where you are doing business. That means it is Indian income or foreign income. Don't look at this right now. Don't look. Answer this. Is it Indian income or foreign income? Foreign income. If it is foreign income, then for non-resident, your decision is here. What will you write in the column of non-resident? 325 or 0? Zero. 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 And here comes the special tax treatment of RNOR, which we studied in scope of total income today. That RNOR will pay tax on foreign income, but only which, which, which foreign income, any foreign income, where the business or profession is controlled from India. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will give you the answer 3,25,000. The, listen, listen, the point that confused everyone out here was controlled from India. Control That is the point which confuse everyone. But I will make that simple for you. Please pay attention. That is relevant only for RNOR. Do you understand for ROR it is not relevant? Because everything is taxable. 
do you understand for non resident also it is not relevant because foreign income cannot be taxed irrespective of place of control we have to see place of receipt and accrual we have to see place of receipt and accrual we don't have to see control we have to see control only for which assessee rnor and thus it is controlled from india therefore we are writing 325 supposingly this business was not controlled from new delhi it was controlled from new jersey do you understand this column will not change this column will not change it is still foreign income and the 75 received in india will still be indian income the only change will be here if the control is in new jersey it is not control from india then it will not be taxable for r n o r so if you have understood that controlled from india is relevant is is having any impact only in case of r n o r is this understood everyone that confusion which came is that clear for everyone very good next income First, tell me what is the income earned amount, total amount. 50, I'll ask you easy, easy questions. Fifty thousand. Okay. Where is your property located? Kenya. 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 That means the income is accruing where? Outside, Outside India. Outside. Where is the money being paid to you? Outside. Outside India. And does this again rent fall in any of the cases of deemed to accrue or arise? interest royalty fts anything like that no that means one thing is clear 50000 accrued also outside india received also outside india 50000 is indian income or foreign income foreign. foreign now i have already explained to you earlier that once you earn income with that what you do you spend for your daughter's education you bring that money to india you throw away that money in the gutter you buy anything with that that is irrelevant we have to see when you earn income after earning income, what you are doing with your money is absolutely irrelevant. Yes or no? Yes. In that case, please tell me that do you understand whatever is written in bracket has got no impact in our discussion. We have already decided 50,000 is foreign income. And now that we have decided 50,000 is foreign income, you have to tell me the answer. You can tell me 0, 0, 0, 50, 50, 50. You can tell me. Now, start participating. 50 because he has to pay tax on everything pay attention easy easy he has to pay tax on everything foreign income non-resident will not pay tax our nor will pay tax only if which is not the case which is not the case only that 325 was a case where it was controlled from delhi and thus this is going to be zero yes or no next income Pension from a former employer in India received in Iran. Okay. It will take a two minutes time for me to explain this to you. If anybody has government employees in family, they will already know what this means. Otherwise, it is a little difficult to understand what is the meaning of pension. Because only if you know the meaning of pension, you will be actually understanding the tax treatment of in order to decide whether it is Indian income or foreign income. Please pay attention. Till the time you are working, can I say you will get salary from your boss? Yes. After you retire, you will not have any income. But you will have expenses. Your day-to-day -day life running and maintenance expenses. Yes, sir. So, we have the culture of giving something called pension. Supposingly, you worked for my organization for 25-30 years of your life. And after giving 30 years to my organization, you retire from my organization. So I promise you that 30 years you have served my company. After you retire, I will still pay you something every month. Obviously, it may not be as big as your salary amount, which you were getting for full time working. It will be maybe 2%, 5%, 10% of your salary. I will continue to pay you even after your retirement. Payment made to employees after retirement is called pension. In government employees, they definitely get pension. In private sector companies, generally don't give pension. I only give you an example. 
generally pension is paid only to government employees but if there is some good company like the tatas the godrej they pay pension to their past employees also these are known as good employers parsi employers tatas godrej they are known to be good employers they treat their employees like family members okay so they give pension now understand please you have retired and thus you are getting pension so can i say right now you are not working at all but this pension is being paid to you for the 30 years of hard work that you have given to my company so this pension is basically an additional salary that i am giving you for those 30 years and tell me one thing during those 30 years what was your place of working it was india so just like your place of working was india your salary was accruing in india this pension also which is paid on account of your past employment in india this is also going to be treated as income accruing in india salary tell me one thing salary arises at which place just tell me this the place you work the place you work this is also salary arising at the place where you work just that we are we did not give you earlier we are giving you now after retirement but the place that you work was india and thus it is going to be treated as indian income this is not deemed to accrue or arise it's the normal rule it's the normal rule i worked in india that means it is accruing in india only payment is happening after retirement payment is happening after retirement but it is accruing at the time when i am working only and thus it is going to be treated as indian income and once it is indian income now you can answer the taxability will be you will be able to answer irrespective of where it is received what will happen can i say it will be taxable for all the three cases it will be taxable yes or no very good next yes please this is where my explanation which i gave you some time back will come into picture is this your income of the current year no this income was earned when past and it was not taxed maybe because it was foreign income maybe because at that time you were not as whatever be the reason it was not taxed this year my question is only this much is it your income of the current year no it is not income you are just shifting your profits from one place to the other tell me one thing supposingly five years ago you earned two lakh rupees okay and that is lying in your mumbai bank account and today you are transferring that money from your mumbai bank account to your ahmedabad bank account is it possible that means are you earning this income whether it was taxed or untaxed five years ago that's not the question also i am not even asking you that my question is are you earning that income today you earned it five years ago you are only changing the location of the income this is forget about indian income or foreign income this is not income only and that is why i told you even if ror has to pay tax on everything there has to be income just shifting money from one place to other cannot be treated as income and if it is not income only there is no question of making the assessi pay tax on that this was income of a past year we have to go and check the past year current year it will not have any impact next very easy point number nine dividend from indian company ten thousand they have not given us here where was the payment made and all that is not given now what to do dividend from indian company will always be deemed to accrue or arise in india dividend from indian company will always be treated as indian income and once it is indian income it is going to be taxable in india understood and last means as far as payment is concerned payment is outside india if payment was in india we would have said two lakh is indian income taxable for everyone payment is outside india okay services also you rendered where services rendered where outside, outside. outside india 
इंडियन इनकम और फॉरेन इनकम ओके वेट लेट मी आस्क लाइक दिस वन बाय वन आंसर हा वन बाय वन आई विल आस्क स्टेप बाय स्टेप नो देन यू विल नॉट गो रॉन्ग माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द इनकम रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया दैट यू हैव टू रीड द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर हा इफ दैट यू डोंट आंसर करेक्टली देन इट विल नॉट वर्क इज द इनकम रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया नो इज द इनकम अक्रूइंग इन इंडिया दैट मीन्स हैव यू वर्क इन इंडिया Yes, no, that means you are not reading the question properly. Have you worked in India? No. no. But, but the client for whom you did your work is using your services where? Read the full line again. Maybe the pen marks are not helping you to read it properly, or wait. read the full line again where has the client used where has the client used your services in india, in india. now listen money outside india your work outside india but under the points of income deemed to accrue or arise in india under royalty and fts did we say something that if the intangible asset is used in india or if the services are used in india then in that case because of this point what will be decide the income as income deemed to accrue or arise in india this will be treated as income deemed to accrue or arise in india and once the income is deemed to accrue or arise in india that means this two lakh will be considered as indian income and once it is indian income that means it is going to be taxable for everyone if the this falls in the list of deemed to accrue or arise in india that is the importance of indian income so if you have studied received in india accruing in india or deemed to accrue or arise in india then you will be able to classify into indian and foreign and once you are able to classify into indian and foreign you will be able to decide which assessee will pay tax which assessee will not pay tax that is ladies and gentlemen your big question on scope of total income of course you have to take the total you know in ca exams calculators are not allowed in ca exams calculators are not allowed they are compulsory some time back there was hashtag couple challenge on social media you know that hashtag couple challenge you don't know couple challenge instagram facebook CA students uploaded pics, pics with their calculators, because CA student and his calculator, it's the most romantic couple. Um, they can make, you know, we can make a love story out of it. Most romantic story ever. So taking, doing things like taking the total, giving the final answer, these are clerical jobs. I am not, I am here to improve your concepts. to teach you concept sections to teach you the law to teach you the logic behind the provision totaling is your responsibility are you done with the total of the first column yes. 13 lakh 50 is it yes. second column 9 lakh 70 70 थर्ड कॉलम सिक्स लैख इफ दीज आंसर्स आर राइट कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू दो स्टूडेंट्स टू टूक द टोटल इफ दीज आंसर इफ द टोटल इज रॉन्ग एंड यू आर नॉट डूइंग इट यू आर वेटिंग दैट सम वन इन द क्लास विल गिव द टोटल सो आई विल जस्ट कॉपी एंड इफ द टोटल टर्न आउट टू बी रॉन्ग आफ्टर फोर लेक्चर्स यू कम एंड टेल मी सर 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 दिस टोटल वॉज रॉन्ग फर्स्ट आई विल गिव यू टू टाइट स्लेप्स I will give you in the language of Mumbai, kan ke niche do lafa, ya in the language of other students, odi chitti adikyum. I will give you two tight slaps first, because it is your responsibility as a student of the class to do the total, to solve it, to find out whether you are getting the correct answer or no. It is your responsibility. So can I or shall I assume that everyone has taken the total here and this is right? All right. So let's go ahead. That was our question nine, which I told you. 
I yesterday I could not do it because only after we finish scope of total income you will be able to do it. 10 was on residential status of HUF. We finished it. 11 was on residential status of company. We finished that also. We go to question number 12 which is on page number 18. Question number 12 which is on page number 18. Yes please read the question. We will finish the question we are left with very few quickly we will finish then we will peacefully take a break so that after the break we can directly start our new chapter ok. So question number 12 please. This is a past exam question and see how easy it is or let me tell you like this direct tax is not easy. Are you finding it easy? Are you getting? See, we have solved so many questions. Huh? You think that you will be able to get answers to those questions on your own also if I tell you to solve them again. You are getting some confidence in direct tax. Yes, sir. Little confidence. Yes, sir. These are exam questions, institute questions. If you get confidence in them, that means we are on right track. Okay. But it's a vast subject. So everything cannot happen at one go slowly slowly one by one chapter after chapter I will be teaching you okay. So as of now we have to decide taxability in this column I have given you the question and you will not read this because this is the answer read one by one please first. Is it going to be taxable in India see. The assessee is a non-resident. If the assessee was resident, then everything will be taxable in India. Assessee is a non-resident. Non-resident will pay tax only if the income is Indian income. So you just have to decide is this 20 lakh royalty Indian income. What do you think? Yes, sir. Why? Because the asset is used in India. If the asset is used in India, that means deemed to accrue or arise in India. And that means it is Indian income and thus the Korean company also has to pay tax. So do you understand once you know scope of total income you can answer all these questions and this as I told you it's a May 17 exam question very recent also. Let's see other question point B. Yes please. Actually see if somebody in Sri Lanka is paying somebody in Korea they will not pay in Indian rupees, common sense. They will pay in Korean currency or uh, or maybe Japanese received in Japan. So Japanese currency or Sri Lankan currency. But to keep it in CA exam, they have converted the amount in Indian rupees. So tell me one thing. Who is using the know-how? The intangible asset? Another non-resident? Where is it being used? For a business in Sri Lanka? And where is the payment being made? In Japan. Is this Indian income? And because it is foreign income, assessee is non-resident, therefore it will be, this answer was taxable, but this answer will be not taxable. Correct or no? Yes, sir. Correct. Third. Ridiculously easy question. Ridiculous. You, it's a joke now. Is it Indian income or foreign income? Indian and therefore it is going to be? Taxable or not taxable? Taxable. And last. Just because you see Mumbai. Uh, I knew this. I knew this. Very good. Very good. I knew this. I knew this. Because you saw Mumbai. Wow, Amchi Mumbai, my Mumbai, ye, 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 Mumbai, matlab accruing. Ladies and gentlemen, open your eyes and ears carefully and see. Yes, please. Even if my client, see, I am the Korean company. My client who is paying me is an Indian company from Mumbai. But I am not performing the work in Mumbai. Where is my work being done? Nepal. Nepal. That means my services are being utilized in which country? Nepal. Nepal. The payment I am getting in which country? Nepal. Nepal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is fees for technical services for conducting feasibility study. 
दैट इज अक्रूइंग और डीम टू अक्रू और इन इंडिया ओनली इफ दसेट और माई सर्विस आर यूज इन इंडिया नाउ माई क्वेश्चन इज वेर आर द सर्विस बींग यूज नेपाल एंड इज इट इंडियन इनकम जस्ट बिकॉज योर क्लाइंट इज एन इंडियन सो यू मीन टू से दैट सपोजिंगली आई एम एन अमेरिकन आर्किटेक्ट ओके मैथ्यूज इज बाइंग हाउस इन अमेरिका एंड टेकिंग माई सर्विस इज इन अमेरिका Matthews came to America only for ten days to give me the contract. Other time you are in India. Matthews, you are a resident. Yes. And just because Matthews, a resident, is paying me in America as an architect, that means will you treat it as Indian income just because Matthews is a resident? No. If he is using my service in India, then it will be Indian income. But here, even if my client is based in Mumbai, my services are being used at what location? and thus it will be indian income or foreign income foreign. and thus taxable or not taxable not taxable understood ladies and gentlemen pagal hai kya mohin pagal pagal ho gaya rn company ke liye it is income or expense you are learning income tax act or expense tax act ek baat bata you have paid me class fees You paid me class fees. For me, we will decide it is taxable or not taxable. How will it be taxable or not taxable? Anything for you, it is expense or income. Understood your mistake, no? Chal, chal, chal. No further criticism. I, I know you are here to learn. It's okay. Question number thirteen. now it's a very easy question and i expect you to answer this please one non resident is making payment to another non resident payment also is made outside india then what has got what is the indian connection here is there any indian connection the project is in india the services were utilized in india fees for technical services were utilized in india one question only indian income or foreign income Indian because it is deemed to accrue or arise as it is deemed to accrue or arise in India and Indian income and therefore Mr. I hope you understand. Now this assessee here is not Mr. X assessee is Mr. Y. If you don't understand that much, no, there is trouble. Ah, huh? Mr. X is paying money. Who is receiving money? So it is income of whom? Mr. X or Mr. Y? You should not be confused. Mr. Y. And will that income be taxable in India even if he is a non-resident? Yes, because it is Indian income deemed to accrue or arise in India. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Very good. Question number fourteen. Now you come across a combo of residential status and scope of total income. Yes. That means first you decide residential status of Mr. Soam. What are the possibilities? He is individual, so he can be R O R, R N O R, or non-resident. Yes. Sir. And once you decide that, you have to decide whether the fifty lakh that he is getting from L K Limited, whether it is going to be taxable or not taxable. I'll tell you one thing. Even without deciding his residential status, I can answer that question. even without deciding his residential status i can answer that question can you answer that question the services were utilized in india from 15th may to 20th august in faridabad 
which is near Delhi, it was utilized in India and thus it is Indian income. Once it is Indian income, whether you are ROR or NOR, non-resident, doesn't matter, this income is going to be, going to be, going to be taxable for you. Is this clear? But part one of the question, determine his residential status. This I am giving to you as homework. You want to take screenshot of the question? By the way, I have given you PDF. No, everyone has the PDF. You have to see scope of total income. We have already answered. Is this 50 lakh taxable in India? Yes. First part of the question is determine his residential status. I have not taught residential status today. I taught yesterday. I just did not do this question because this question also involves the scope of total income. Otherwise, I would have solved this question yesterday itself. And this part, I will ask you to show your notebook on video. You don't have to read you. Okay, sir. This did I orally calculate. No, I want you to solve it in writing. I want to see whether you are able to solve a residential status question on your own or no. That means two questions determine residential status and whether 50 lakh is taxable. 50 lakh is taxable. We have answered residential status. I am giving you as homework. Number of days are given incoming outgoing. Everything is given first time he left. Everything is given why he has left. Why he has come back. He has not come for a visit. He has come for setting up yeah, employment purpose work purposes so 6365 also will be applicable full question i have almost explained to you it is your compulsory duty that you are going to be doing the performance of residential status residential status part you will be checking okay chalo question number 15 please Continue. Continue. Don't stop in between. Matlab, let's be clear all the income is received where America we just have to see incomes which are accruing in India that will be taxable irrespective of residential status and if he is resident then everything will be taxable no? then so it becomes very easy let's decide his residential status first where does he normally stay USA means if we are asked last seven years or last 10 years or last four years or anything everything is zero he stays in USA only in the current year 21 21 which date he came to India first November which date he left India 5th of March can you count for me the stay in the current year can I say November 30 days December 31 January 31 Feb 28 and March 5 this is his stay in India do you agree with this 125 that means he is not fulfilling 182 criteria and 6365 is not applicable because he is coming for visit even if it was applicable last four years, his stay is zero. He stays in America. He does not come only to India. What is the residential status of this assessee? He is a yes. He is a non-resident. Understood. He is a non-resident. And now, if he is a non-resident, let's see what is the taxability of income dividend from a U.S.-based company. What do you think? Taxable or exempt? Taxable or no? If, tell me this. Indian income or foreign income? No. Foreign. 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 See, accruing in a foreign country and everything is received in America. Foreign income. Foreign income for a non-resident. Taxable or not taxable? Not taxable? Now see, if he was a resident, then this 50,000 would have been taxable in India. Do you realize the importance of residential status and scope of total income in computation of income and tax liability in our country? If he was resident, 50,000 would have been taxable in India. Because he is non-resident, it is not taxable. Second, interest from government of India bonds, 2 lakh rupees. Are you listen, you are saying taxable, it was used in Bhutan. Still you are saying taxable? Yes, Junaid? Once you receive 
इंटरेस्ट सैलरी रॉयल्टी एफ टी एस फ्रॉम होम गवर्नमेंट इट विल बी डीम्ड टू अक्रू और अराइज इन इंडिया एंड देर फॉर इट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज इंडियन इनकम एंड देर फॉर यू विल हैव टू पे टैक्स दैट मीन कैन आई से दिस इज टैक्सेबल इवन इफ यू आर नॉन रेसिडेंट थर्ड एग्रीकल्चर इनकम फ्रॉम इंडिया वेट दिस इज वॉट आई वॉज टेलिंग यू समाइम बैक दिस इज माई नेक्स्ट चैप्टर एग्रीकल्चर इनकम इन इंडिया इफ यू डू इट इज एक्सेम फॉर एवरी वन outside india only it is going to be taxable that also obviously for resident because outside india again non resident we cannot take tax if today i ask you whether this income is indian income or foreign income then what is your answer because i have taught you only that much i have not taught you exempt income chapter indian income bas i expect only that much from you it is indian income so normal circumstances your answer will be it is taxable but in another chapter exempt income they have said that agriculture income shall be exempt at least i have told you section 10 before section number i have quoted in class before agriculture income is exempt and therefore we will not take it it is indian income but because it is exempt in some other chapter we will not be taking it and last income short term capital gain on sale of shares of indian company but you sold in usa indian income or foreign income once the asset is located in india first point of deem to accrue or arise capital gain i took example of property like property there can be shares also what is the location of asset in india so in india and thus it is indian income even if you are non resident it is going to be taxable effectively this 2 lakh and this 6 lakh the total taxable income is coming to rupees 8 lakh 8 lakh is your total taxable income agriculture income is exempt even if it is indian income because agriculture in india is exempt and foreign income non resident because you are non resident listen ladies and gentlemen if he was a resident this dividend would have been taxable is that point understood by everyone yes sir very good next by the way the next question let me be honest it's like a question on computation of total income it involves computation of income from salary house property other sources we have not studied these chapters we all know that what have we studied only till now Indian foreign, Indian foreign, Indian foreign. Correct, correct. No problem. Okay. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, you just put a star against question sixteen, and uh, this question we will not do now. Once we finish all our other chapters, we will. You will come. You can do it on your own. It will become very easy. Right now, even if I teach you everything, you will not understand because you have not been taught chapters like salary, house, property, capital gain, other sources. So right now, you will not understand. Just put a star against this question. against any concept if we put a star that means right now i will not explain i will finish the chapter then we will do it in fact some of these concepts even if i don't do it if i finish the heads of income and you come and do it on your own you will be able to do it on your own also because the concept is not in this chapter it is in some other chapter so right now we will not do any time wastage today we did a very very big question question number 9 where we discussed everything in detail about the column of ror about the column of rnor about the column of non resident did we do question number 9 today yes. detail mein every income we discussed and discussed the taxability of every income yes. okay a similar question we have compute the gross total income in the hands of the individual means what have they given again a list of incomes is given you compute if he is ror which of these will be taxable and non resident i change the question we will do all three columns like question number 9 in question 9 did we do three columns ror r nor and non resident all the three columns this question is exactly same as question number 9 and to get more confidence in your life you will be doing this on your own again homework so i have given you one homework that is only res only a part of that question residential status and this second question which is absolutely same as question 9 now wait this question if you observe the solution is given obviously solution is given only for ror and non resident but my homework is to solve all the three columns i am asking you to do r nor also if you read the solution and you do it then it is injustice to your talent please don't do it that way please don't do it that way okay please solve it on your own then you can check your answer if you have any difficulty we will take up all that tomorrow so i am giving you two questions as homework 16 we are leaving because we have not studied salary house property in 17 i am giving you homework and which was that other question in 14 but not the full question in 14 all only little part which part i have given you 
ओनली रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस चलो क्वेश्चन वी आर ओनली लेफ्ट विथ लिटल हा देन लेट्स टेक अ पीसफुल ब्रेक लेट्स फिनिश दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर 18 इज बेस्ड ऑन सीडीसी कंटिन्यूस डिस्चार्ज सर्टिफिकेट लेट्स सी इफ यू आर एबल टू रिकलेक्ट दिस प्लीज क्वेश्चन नंबर 18 सो डोंट बी एक्साइटेड जस्ट बिकॉज इट इज कोची पोर्ट एंड इट इज फ्रॉम केरला वाओ वाओ केरला नहीं नहीं फोकस फोकस ही इज एन एम्प्लॉय क्रू मेंबर इन अ शिप द शिप इज लिविंग ऑन ट्वेल्थ दैट मीन्स कैन आई सेज लिविंग अलॉन्ग विद द शिप इट इज पॉसिबल दैट द शिप कैन कम बैक अर्ली बट ही इज सर्विंग अ सी डी सी सी डी सी पीरियड मीन्स फॉर दैट मच टाइम यू विल नॉट गेट एनी हॉलीडे The date entered into the CDC in respect of joining the ship is twelfth August. Can I say also the start date of our journey twelfth August? And the date in the CDC in respect of signing off, that means leaving the ship, is twenty first January two thousand and twenty two. That means can I say this is the CDC period of Mr. Damodar? And first April to thirty first March is your financial year. During that period. this period irrespective of your location will not be considered as your stay in india in respect of crew member what concept we studied the cdc period will be excluded from your stay in india that means out of 365 days we will minus these many days are you understanding continue please what is given by the way this question is on residential status but i am not giving you as homework because this is a little complicated residential status what are the two possibilities 182 in the current year second possibility 60 in the current year 365 last four years yes or no 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 crew member of indian ship citizen of india condition 2 not applicable the only way in which he becomes resident or he can become resident is going to be 182 days there is no other way of becoming resident he falls in the exception that's the first thing that you should remember is that clear is that clear and then we have to check so one thing i can tell you these last 4 years and all all that is irrelevant you have to first fulfill first to fulfill 182 days criteria this was his cdc period can i say this will be excluded from stay in india other than the cdc can you observe he has also gone on another holiday 29 days before his journey started so journey started in august but in may he has gone for picnic that means can i say there are another 29 days for which he was outside india okay so let's see what is his total stay outside india his total stay outside india 29 days of family picnic hello what about the other days in the month of august how many days you will count as outside india if you if you take 31 minus 12 it will be wrong because 12 also has to be excluded so how many days he is outside india can i say from 12 to 31 you can count 12 13 14 15 16 you can count 20 days of august because only the first 11 days he was in india so can i say 31 minus 11 20 days of august is outside india continue after this it is very easy september 30 october 31 november 30 december 31 jan 31 no jan 31 nahi jan only 21 so what is his total stay outside india all these days put together how much you have also included 29 days 29 days are separate no separate from 163 so what is his total stay outside india 
दैट मीन्स कैन आई से थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव माइनस वन सिक्सटी थ्री माइनस ट्वेंटी नाइन वन हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी थ्री डेज ये स्टेड इन इंडिया एंड लास्ट फोर इयर्स इट इज फोर थर्टी सो विल यू मेक हिम रेसिडेंट बिकॉज ऑफ सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल ओनली हैव वी अंडरस्टूड एंड देर फॉर दिस एस एस सी इज गोइंग टू बी ट्रीटेड एज नॉन रेजिडेंट the cdc period will be excluded other picnics and holidays will be excluded after that you have to make it 182 because for crew member 6365 is not applicable understood how you got tested on the exception along with the cdc question hello everyone yes and i think question number 19 is on company company scope of total income last question also please can you Again, can I say two parts? First, residential status, and then scope of total income. First, decide residential status. A C C is a company. If it is an Indian company, it is always resident. First, tell me, this is Indian company or foreign company? Foreign company. A foreign company can become resident only if the place of effective management means the big decisions, major decisions are taken in India. Question has given you everything. In case of Daisy Limited, where are the big decisions, major decisions taken? So you answer this question right now. Daisy Limited is resident or non-resident? Non-resident because it does not have OEM in India. And if it is non-resident, which is the only income on which it will pay tax, in case there will be any tax, Indian income. So you that's the second part of the question. You have done export of diamonds from Mumbai, and from that you have earned a profit of seventy-five lakh. So where is your business located? Even if you are a non-resident, where is your business? in mumbai so where is the profit being earned in india and thus this 75 lakh this this 75 lakh will be taxable in india is this clear yes sir it is clear everyone okay there is one rule one rule which says that if your activity this is about that uh, circular which i told you about poem which is applicable in ca final if your activity is only restricted to purchasing i have a simple question this is common sense no circular required when does profit arise when you purchase or sell if you sell so if you only come to india for purchasing purposes supposingly you have got a perfume shop in dubai you come to india purchase perfumes from the local markets purchase and go away and where are you doing your sale activity outside india if your activity is only for purchasing purposes then that income will not be treated as indian income so the question has used some confusing words first they have said that we have opened the office in mumbai only for what purpose to purchase if you go by these words that the responsibility of the mumbai office is only purchasing work only purchasing then that income will not be treated as indian income but in case the mumbai office is involved in the sale activity selling activity other than the purchasing part then there will be profits which will be deemed to accrue or arise in india as a ca intermediate students even if you don't write it it is okay if you understand what i am speaking if you think it is required to be written you can copy or you can write what i am saying that if the office in india is opened only for purchasing activity then there will be no income arising in india no income irrespective of value of the export the duty of the office is only purchasing then there will be no income arising in india okay but if that office is also doing sale activity then whatever profit is earned in india that is going to be taxable only purchase 
then no income and if it is doing sale activity then in that case it will be taxable so first they told us that the office is open only for purchases if they tell us only this much that means can i say there will be no taxable income in india but later they tell us that there is some profit so there is some confusing confusion or there is there is some confusing thing written in the question to be on a safer side what you can say is if the activity is restricted to purchasing work then it will be not taxable but if it is doing sale activity then it will be taxable you can write both answers also to be on a safer side absolutely no problem are we clear so effectively there is one question which is based on salary house property that we have not done and there are two questions that i have given you as homework one full question on scope of total income similar to question 9 and one question number 14 only the computation of residential status part everybody is clear on this all right so that's the end of our second chapter residential status and scope of income